poker players. Over $1 million in guarantees from April 10th through April 22nd during the Poker Atlas Tour at Texas Cardhouse Houston. 16 different poker tournaments, including the $50,000 guaranteed kickoff event, the $250,000 guaranteed mystery bounty, and the half a million dollar guaranteed main event. For all buy-ins, structures, and information, download the Poker Atlas app and visit texascardhouse.com today. A very happy Sunday to everybody in TCH Live Nation as we've got a very special final table for you this evening. It is the final table of the quarter million dollar guaranteed mystery bounty. Hello, everybody. I am Wes Tucker, and I'll be joined by the man, myth, and the legend himself, Justin Hammer, in just a few minutes. But before that, take a look at this lineup. Again, 503 entries, culminating into a prize pool of $258,000. Going over the guarantee, and now we've whittled it down to our final nine. And those final nine have been fighting it big for not only these payouts you see here, first place taking home just north of $32,000, but they've also been fighting tooth and nail for the bounties. That's right, the 20K bounty has yet to be pulled. So someone on stream tonight is going to walk away a big winner and not necessarily have to win the tournament to do so. One $20,000 bounty left. One Three two hundred or three twenty five hundred dollar bounties left. Two thousand and four four hundred dollar bounties. So plenty of money at stake for our heroes tonight. And what a lineup we have as we take a quick look here. In the one seat, we got Tony, guy who is all smiles and ready to rock and roll. To the returning favorite, Cam, making back to back final tables here on TCH Live. Three seat is just like Mike. He will be taking over tonight, I'm sure, at some point. Chandler in seat four. Jason in five is the short stack at 320,000. Seat six will be Raj. He comes into our table as the chip leader. Seven is stream regular Han. Eight, Ashir. And rounding things out in the ninth seat, Hail Caesar, as he will take the third biggest stack into tonight's contest. And without further ado, we are ready to rock and roll. A big thank you to everybody spending their Sunday evening and most likely Monday morning with TCH Live. So we look through here, Tony, Ace Queen suited to kick things off. Antonio, a very patient, very methodical player. Definitely going to be raising this one to get things going. And does so. It's going to be 150000 to go. It's going to be too much for the pocket fours of Cam to handle. And Chandler with a suited ace. Definitely the kind of hand you want to see a flop with, but looky here, the short stack finds a pocket pair and he's all in. 320,000. Gonna chase everybody away up until, looks like Caesar. Caesar in the big blind, oh my goodness, he's got Jax. Caesar's moving all in, trying to isolate Jason. And we'll see if Tony can come through. He's got a really great hand under the gun. Ace Queen suited, nothing to scoff at. Of course, little does he know he's up against two pocket pairs. And just impeccable timing as we welcome man, myth, and legend Justin Hammer back into the broadcast booth. Justin, you picked a dandy of a time to join the What's show. What's up? Hey, we just got a, a few monster hands. How many? Well, this must be like the 10th. Oh, this is hand number one, and we've got two players all in with their tournament life at risk. And oh, wow. Tony in an interesting position to take a huge chip lead. 
Did they show uh, Caesar right before the uh, final table started? Did it make it onto the stream? I don't know if they saw it. But I don't believe it did. There was, uh, there was one extra. There was nine players and ten bounties because he hadn't pulled it yet. So I said, pull it before. And uh, he drew the 20, he, the oh, 20K. no way. Yeah, the oh, one right before. They, see, now you made me a liar. I told TCH Live Nation was going to be drawn on screen. Uh, no, sorry. He is, in fact, a liar. Uh, the 20K was the last one pulled right before the final table. So to the flop we go, and it is Queen High. Tony wow. in a fantastic position to take everything. Some bricks. Some bricks he's asking Some for. Bricks. Yeah. There's one. Oh, no, out. Out for Caesar. There is a straight out there. It's a 10 and only a 10 for Caesar. Oh, he's got Caesar. He's still knocking, bro. Woo! I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Ah. Told you. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know hey, if this one is going on there, but uh, Caesar's actually running pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he can't run too much better than that. Going perfect, God. perfect for the straight. And he's going to drag a good pot. I mean, he oh, came really? into the final table, third biggest chip stack, and now skyrockets into the chip lead. And at the same time, we have our first elimination in the first hand of our final table. Uh, Jason, for his efforts, is going to be taking home $3,200, and I imagine a couple of bounties. That uh, he yeah, has not bad. Uh, Jason did actually get one of the 5K bounties, so uh, his bounty price pool was uh, even higher than his payout. So. Walking away with a little over eight thousand total for today. I don't. He might have got other bounties too. I know. Uh, I know for sure he got at least the five thousand. So we're gonna call it at least eight thousand for a couple days work. And now let's take a look here. We know the twenty k is gone now, but it looks like there is a bounty that's about to be pulled. Of course, they're gonna pull them as we go. As I heard you tell the final table before they started. Yes. So we're gonna have bounty pulls as the show goes on. We'll check in with Caesar in just a moment. And would you look at this? Who's that handsome devil that's gonna be <laughs> appearing on screen in just a moment? I thought I saw you in the corner there for a second. Yeah, oh no, that yeah, that I mean it's kind of hard to miss the, the pinstripe suit. But <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh they're they're holding up here. I told them that they could just do the draw on stream and there's a little confusion. You'll hear it later, but they uh, they think they need to wait because that's actually not okay. But we have this on screen now, so everything is in front of everybody. And uh, really, to the poll any kind of position, we have everything uh, recorded. So I I told them they could go ahead and walk up and pull it and show the camera and be good to go. But they are they're still uh, they're waiting. Well, while they're waiting, let's go ahead. Let's recap today because today was a busy day at Texas Cardhouse Houston. Not only do we have the restart here, some of our combatants went through a turbo this morning to get into this tournament that had the restart. And of course, the giant stack took place today. Oh, yeah. The giant stack turbo took place today. And how about a main event satellite that's going on in the main card room, right? I am getting uh, just exhausted again thinking about all of this uh, it was uh yeah the turbo started at nine o'clock it was the uh it was the last flight as we watched caesar pull again he his last one was uh Twenty thousand five hundred. So I'm guessing it'll be a little bit less than that. But probably uh, the nine o'clock turbo played right into day two. Uh, at twelve o'clock, the giant stack started. Got two hundred and fifty something entries. See, look at that. There's trash on the floor, so I go pick it up. Thanks. There it is. I mean, you're you're a true man of the world, Mr. Hammer. You're a true that's, man of the world. That's what we do. We keep things clean. I'm trying to tell them, go ahead and go. You can you can go ahead and draw. But we do have confirmation that bounty of hold was for $2,500, so already adding to a fantastic day for Caesar. Yeah, he's uh, he's fixing to get more than first place before, they, before there's even seven players left. Wait, you want to talk about interesting. How about Cam playing two hands at this final table? Both of them pocket fours. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's it. That's, uh, Cam is no, uh, no stranger to this final table. I think the last time we were in here doing this, uh, he was here. And my last time doing it before that was the title event. And uh, he was there for that as well. And he was also there for that. He got second place. So uh, the last three streams in a row that I've done, he's been a part of. So he's uh, when I was breaking to the final table, I jokingly asked him uh, do you need directions do you know where this is can i walk you over there and uh i think it took him a second to realize that i was kidding so no i've been oh i see what you're doing yeah we've kind of made a game out of this too we 
uh, or go over under on how many jacket changes Cam is going to go through a day now in the card house. You know, <laughs> we, we noticed three of them just yesterday. Yeah. When he was just going through his preliminaries to get to day two. And even when he was on the stream, it was a different jacket than he wore all day. Yeah. And here he is now. This is the third jacket I've seen today for Cam. So he's got a hefty wardrobe in the car. I think he's uh, he's got a feel for the ones that he... Uh, things are lucky. Maybe if his luck changes a little bit, he goes in and he switches, you know, brings the uh, whatever feels the best jacket out. Uh, I think he's always wearing the same mask, though. I'm not sure. I don't think. Uh, I mean, if, I mean, after maybe a year, it's time to wash that one. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't broke. If it ain't broke, don't if fix it. it. But if broke, it, don't fix it. If it's all crusty and full of spores, I mean, the last thing that you're going to want is to be re-inhaling all of that. I'm mean, trying to find a way to freeze that without <laughs> Go ahead. No, keep gross. going. Keep going. Let me hear it. Yeah, okay. Uh, you don't want, you want to find a way to, to inhale? Uh, what were you saying? Inhale what? Without oh. inhaling oh. all of the harmful you know, uh -huh. bacteria, spores, all that fun mm, stuff. You know? Yep, you're going to get canceled. I know. Sorry. I mean, this is, this is the night Wes Tucker gets canceled, everybody. <laughs> it's now the canceled. Justin Hammer show on TCH Live. <laughs> <laughs> No way. Yeah, I was totally kidding. I don't know anything about his mask habits. <laughs> Only what I can see, he wears a different jacket uh, regularly. Raj also pulled one of the big bounties. I think he got a uh, $10,000 one. That is true. And looky here, he's got Queens to boot from the low jack. Going to bump it up to 175. Caesar, a little suited gapper action. When you're the chip leader, you can afford to speculate a bit. But here comes a short stack with a pocket pair. Tony finds it and ships it. Yeah, let's see what happens here. This is a spot where uh, when you get a normal size raise, but then you get a shot at a bounty, sometimes people come along with, uh, you know, perhaps worse hand than they normally would because they got that extra shot at a bounty. He does brick this one, but queens are good. Tony, though, I think this may be a position that he, I mean, he's, it's already a position. He's miles behind. He's all in pre-flop. He's going to need some magic on the turn in river. You can see he's drawing to a mere 8% as we go to this turn. Yeah, that is not a very high percent. That's actually out of 100. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that's how percentages yeah, work. Yeah, it's 8 out of 100. So. Oh! oh! How does it you feel? know what? Um, whatever oh, statistics book we're reading, I think we need to read <laughs> they, they just flip-flopped. <laughs> they just flip-flopped. Yeah, that'll do it as Tony is going to end up with a boat. Six is full of kings, and he will take it down. You know, he was on the other end with a runner-runner straight to uh, lose the potential double knockout. So oh, yeah. only only fair that he uh, maybe gets to find a two-outer there on his own. You could hear Caesar saying, how's it feel to be on the other end of it? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to it's gotta feel good. Mine was worth 2500 How does yeah. yours feel? <laughs> So a big uh, what's going on to Fernando in the chat as well, or as our DCH Live Nation knows him, the great smudge on our 1-3 and 1-2 streams. Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday, my friend. And thanks for joining us. Again, it's going to be a fantastic final table, some of Houston's best for sure. And you even saw when it came to the earlier part of the stream, Lego brought this comment into it. How is Han always at the final table and i got a simple answer for you he's just that good just that good just that good same reason uh opposite that i am never at the final table i am just <laughs> that bad fair enough and now a suited connector for tony's on the button this is an interesting spot for him he's gonna want to see a flop with it but he doesn't want to get bent out of the pot so uh, it's got to be a raise if he wants to see a flop but you still got two pretty good stacks behind you. What's the play for you, Mr. Hammer? Yeah, he's got about 10 big lines. So uh, I, I'm sure the uh, cool kids would say there's lots of moves here, but I, I only know of two moves in this situation. <laughs> and one of them is to get them all in, and the other one is to chuck them in the muck. So uh, I looks like he's counting out. Oh. oh, this looks to be half of his stack going in. An interesting spot. Yeah, Cam mucks it. So now there's a spot where you 
No, he's probably oh. committed. Oh, and Mike with an actual hand here. Oh, boy. You see, now there's two kinds of thought processes for Mike. I'm either vastly out outkicked yeah. or I'm miles ahead. Yeah. Or I'm actually there's three. Or yeah, I'm it could be flipping. flipping. Yeah, yeah, he knows that, uh, and he knows that he thought about it for a while. So unless it was pure Hollywood, it's probably not yeah, he huge did. hand. He did go all in. Snap call, of course, from Tony. Half his stack is committed, and now Tony will once again for his tournament life have to sweat five cards. Let's see. We know, uh, we know the flop doesn't uh, mean a whole lot. Oh, yeah. oh that's a pretty good flop for that hand. Take the lead. A uh, pair and a flush draw. Yeah, brick turn. So now Mike needing an ace or a jack to that's win not this a spade. pot. And the 10 going to give Tony two pair, and Tony going to double up. He's going on quite the roller coaster ride there. Uh, <laughs> Natural nine. Going up, going up, going up, going down. That's the beauty and the horror of no limit holding. <laughs> yeah, this game, it's tough. This game's tough. It's a lot of fun to watch. It's a lot of fun to run. I don't, I don't know how they play this. It's just so tough. Well, I mean, knowing you, if it's only two cards, that kind of puts you to sleep a little bit. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> the more, the merrier. Give me as many cards, or at least a poll at new cards. If I'm playing a five-card draw game, like I might be able to look at X. So that, sounds, that sounds perfect. That sounds right up my alley. Well, speaking of seeing as many cards as possible, I have confirmed the rumors. We've got a tournament with bomb pots in it, as well as a reverse button. Uh, How about that? Yeah, that's coming up. That's coming up tomorrow. We're going full blown Houston style, and the tournament is going to have bomb pots just like the cash games do. Uh, when the dealer sits down, or we're going to do it on the level. Actually, normally it's when the dealer sits down, but we want to make sure everyone's doing it at the same time. So we're doing it when the level changes. Uh, we're going to do a bomb pot. Annie's going to be the size of the big blind. Everyone's going to pay it. Going to go straight to the flop. Bomb pot. I'm being corrected with facts. Uh, it's going to be the size of the small blind. And now tens for Caesar in the hijack. Definite raise candidate. It's over to Mike. He's got the suited computer hand. I don't really see him going anywhere with this one. I think this could be a easy takedown, easy blind steal. Oh yeah, trade deuce offsuit, 100%. So I want to go ahead and highlight something in chat here. Christian, Raj is an underdog, y'all. Don't sleep on him. Been seeing him play for quite some time now. And you know, just I really don't see how it'd be possible to classify the one who came into final table as the chip leader, as the underdog. But, you know, I definitely do agree. He is a very solid player. I've been watching him play for the better part of a year now. And I got to say, he's going to be a tough one to take down. Uh, yeah, I've been watching him uh, come up and pull bounties all day long, it seems like. So if I had to uh, pick a word to start, it would not have been underdog. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what the table feels about it. But like uh, Wes said, there's he came in with lots of chips. If I don't know anything about anyone, you know who I'm always going to pick to win the final table? <laughs> the guy with all the chips. There you go. Off in a pretty safe bet as Tony going to peel back ace jack off suit here. It's on fire. Oh, yeah. Running good, running good. I think he's thinking, man, I don't really have to go all in anymore. Like I could, I could just raise. No, he really doesn't. He can, he can afford to play poker now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> he's in the hijack, relatively middle position in a nine-handed poker table. So he's still got a lot of action behind him. So he's gonna go with a good call. sizing here. I think it was a call. No, nope. ah, he bumps it up, makes oh, it 150. 150. Oh, I didn't see the white one. Okay, oh. yeah. And Cam with some high suited connectors. Calls for 150. Oh, we got pocket trays. 
You see, I like this call from Cam here as well. It gives him the opportunity to fold to a big three bet, even a big jam here, a three bet jam. Because it's definitely not the kind of hand most people would stake their tournament life on, especially this late in the final table. Yeah, He is suited, yes. He's connected, yes. But he also left himself out. It's very smart play. The threes went into the muck. Yeah. Waiting for a better spot. Raj thinking. I mean, two of the diamonds here already been burned, and those are in the hands of Cam, of course. He does want to see a flop, though. It's a good drawing hand. It's a sneaky one from the big blind, too. Yeah. Jack-8 suited action. Closes the action. He gets in at a discount. Ooh. Okay, so Cam flopping top pair. Both Tony and Raj with a jack. Tony's got backdoor clubs to boot here. So Tony definitely going to bet this. The question is just how much. Thinking some sizing maybe around 225, about a half pot maybe, a little over half pot. A little thinking, less than half pot. You might be right. So the bet, it was 225. Snap all in. Snap, yeah, that was quick. It just insta all in. I mean, really, at this point, with that stack size, what's there to think about? <laughs> but it's uh, gen it is weird to see Cam make a decision that quickly. Yeah, I watched him play quite a bit during the day, and he he has a lot of spots where he just wants them to know, like, I am I do not have a decision here. I am just putting it in. And whether it's I don't care if I'm bluffing or I don't care if I have a monster, he just does it. I. Part of me admires the people that can just find the spots and just do it. They don't have to, they don't want to always make it seem like they're thinking. Sometimes they want to just get it in, get it over with. Now yeah. a spot here for Raj and definitely knows that even if someone is shoving with any Jack X holding, it's probably going to outkick his Jack eight. And he will find the fold here. Tony going to make the call. So now, Cam in good shape, looking to extend his tournament life. So Tony with Ace Jack needing to improve. And to the turn and does pick up more outs with the club draw. So looking for an ace, a jack, or a club to the river, it's the king of clubs. So runner, runner goes Tony, the run good, continuing to pour out of seat one as he will drag the pot and eliminate Cam in eighth place this evening as we take a look here at the pay ladder. So Cam eliminated, unfortunately, in unfortunate fashion, runner, runner clubs to give the nut flush to Tony, but he will take home $3,820 for his efforts. And as I said before, I can imagine a fair couple bounties over the day. Uh, yeah, I definitely remember him drawing at least one. And looky here, you even get a little shout out in the Me? chat today. I should wear my poker hat, hat, final table hat more often. Thanks, Mr. Hammer, for getting me the right side. So when did you go into the hat business, Mr. Hammer? Because uh, I've got a couple cowboy hats that you'd be resized. <laughs> uh, I went into the hat business when I started running the uh, Poker Atlas Tour. Uh, yeah, we give final table hats to players that make the final table, and uh, sometimes you run out, and I went and got uh, – Went and got some more. I don't. I've, it's happened a few times where we've run out and I had to go get them. And, uh, yeah, Lego. Lego. Lay. I don't remember doing it for someone named Lego, so that might be a nickname or something. But, <laughs> but we do have some insight on one of our players coming from another member of chat, and that is AC. Mike always play tight and hold them. So. Uh, that, I think he said that right when I mentioned that he folded those threes. AC, uh, obviously a legend around here and uh, knows these players very well. And that's part of why he wins every single uh, satellite he's ever played in his entire career, I think. And uh, he's just giving us some uh, inside information. 
And inside information. How about some information on a bounty pull here as Tony going to go ahead and collect on the knockout of Cam. And the suspense is killing me. Let's see what the pull is. Uh, looks like it's one of the 400 balls. 400, yeah. This is, uh, I've never seen anyone more disappointed than a group of poker players getting the minimum bounty. I know. It's, uh, you know, you walk down the street, you found $400 sitting there, you'd be ecstatic. I mean, I walked into any other establishment and Justin Hammer hands me a $400 <laughs> bill. I'm a happy camper. I imagine <laughs> if you got like a scratcher at the gas station for $400 on it. And some of these guys say, ah, oh, man, man, like this. Unreal. Like I delivered them a letter that said a family member passed away. <laughs> Look at it, like, oh, right, this is. Uh, obviously, everybody, once you get to that point, you know you're expecting something, then it's a little disappointing when it's the minimum. But the way this one works, we have a big bounty bin. So you get one that says draw from the bigger drum, and then that one is guaranteed $5,000, and today it was up to $20,000, 20500 And uh, they even get disappointed when they win 5000 because at that point, that's the minimum of what they're supposed to get. So we saw it a couple of times where they were really hoping to get 20 and only, I know you can't see it at home, but only, giant air quotes, only. got uh, $5,000. I mean, I think I saw the soul of Han leave his eyes when he picked up a bounty that said, <laughs> Free hat drawing. <laughs> I don't know of how much closer you can get to a zonk yeah. when it comes to drawing a bounty than that, but well done, Mr. Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we gave some free stuff out, so like they, they were added. They were uh, get something free and then draw again. Yeah, Han got he also got a 5k bounty, so it's so we take a look here. It is a gutter ball flop for Han. Meanwhile, Tony with top pair, top kicker. And Tony does block the heart draw, so the sizing here not going to be as big as we'd expect to see on a little bit of a wetter board. I mean, on most wet boards, this is a decently wet flop. An over and a gutter. is going to make the call wants to see another street so off to the turn we go and the four of spades definitely not what he was looking for so the sizing here from tony gotta be up more around the half pot range at this point yeah it does pick up some more outs now a uh, he does. five would make it five would him. an interesting turn of events here as han gonna take the lead And not sure what kind of alarm bells that would set off to Tony. The bet of 130K. It looks like Tony's cutting out some raisin chips, and there you have it. Quick raise and snap full again. Han, very quick decision maker. Yeah, very like, quick. Uh, Han was trying to pull a little bit of a blocker bet there, and. Uh... Tony sniffed it out. Race, play. It's tough when you're just uh, running hot. Like it's tough to slow down. Take oh, your foot off the gas. When you just, uh, I feel like the last three pots he's played has gone his way. We got Sharon in there, giving them a little bit more instruction. Sharon, one of the new faces on the Atlas Tour from yeah. last year. Glad to see her about. Does a fantastic job on day-to-day -day operations. Yeah, she's uh, helping with a lot of behind-the-scenes organizational stuff to make things run smoothly. And so far, uh, she's done spectacularly. This is the second uh, stop that she's been with us and works hard, does a great job. Happy to have her on the team. And when I take a five-minute break to go get a cup of coffee, she is one of the ones that comes in and uh, has to get yelled at on my behalf. But uh, I will be back here shortly. We go Tony here again, picking up a pretty decent holding, I got to say. 
King Jack suited. Kojak. Bang, bang. They should. They should hold. Get up and go over here and go. We made them 40, we made them 40 minute levels for this tournament because we had some stalls left. It's me telling them that the uh, the stalling time that it takes to do the bounties has been factored into the structure because they were asking for every floor person in the building to do it. I did go back and add time since there was confusion for what was going on, but trying to get them to go uh, do the draws on their own and then just keep things moving. But I said I told them to hold up because I wanted the person doing the draw to not miss a hand. And they took that to mean that we need to pause. pause like, everything. wait, yeah, okay. we don't, they don't, they need to pause long enough for them to go do the draw. But there's my coffee, see? I, I, I can see the coffee <laughs> cup in your hand now, wow. <laughs> yeah, I knew I was gonna be on here with you doing this late night stream, so. There you go, and Chandler sees an ace and moves all in a suited ace at that. Ace, nine, suited. Ashir, not a bad holding either, but definitely not something you can call a three bet with. And now, will Tony attempt to knock out one more? And he's been running hotter than the sun itself. Uh, what would you do if you were him? Yeah, I got to ride the wave. Ride the wave here. Well, it looks like he settles on a fold. Wow. I don't think I, don't think I can fold that. Even if I wasn't running red hot. <laughs> if I was running red hot. But again, we've been over this. That's why I am, in, whenever I'm at a final table, it's in the booth with you. Fair enough. <laughs> like final tables? Yes, I've done many final tables. Well, yes. not, not playing, but. I've talked about people playing at many final tables. Yeah, it looks like a update. Appreciate it, my friend James. Thank you. Chunder. Yeah, I thought that that was yeah. true. Okay. Well, Except I it. there's a L in there, and I thought that they they talked to them before putting their name in yeah. here, right? So it would have been. Uh, I know that I I know the spelling because I every time we break a table, I call them by their name. So I knew that the spelling there was no L, but I assumed that. And I also heard someone call him Chandler, but I assumed that they were mispronouncing it. Huh. So. Well, appreciate it, James. Thank you very much. Yeah, definitely want to call people by the right yeah. by the right pronunciation of the right name for sure. So I'm gonna assume James is correct here. Yep. More than more than fair to assume so as Caesar looks down at King Queen Student. Just watched the series ending of Friends, so it's Chandler. Oh, there you go. The people have spoken, man. They're pretty torn. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to get in too much trouble, but I, no. I've never watched the series of Friends. Wait, what? Yeah. No. Oh, my goodness. Right. No, my wife watches it oh. every, every single night she watches it. But Nope. Nope. You know, man, but... We take a look here. I mean, I, I'm still processing that last bit of information. But wait, I know wait. that you're supposed to clap. I know that part. Man, oh man! But on ahead with ace high right now. Got a gutter ball and two overs to the board. Man, Han will chase him away with ace high, so it gets the job done. Your job's a joke. You're broke. Love life, CEO. Yeah, I was a little surprised to see the tens folded too, guys. I really was. Could have been a possible card reader error because I really don't see tens getting folded from that position, let alone at all at this final table. Definitely had to be a misread. So the mighty seven do suited for Mike. Not going anywhere. You can see the little grin there. I believe you 100%, Lego. I believe you 100%. And, you know, while uh, Justin had to step out of the booth for a second, you know, I just got to reiterate that the views of Justin Hammer about the show, friends, are not necessarily the views that are reflected by TCH Live. Yeah, I think you're right. Less than eight. Seven seven five. 
Yeah, sorry. And there yeah, we, we go. Back into it. Hammer as Chandler moves all in. King, queen, off suit. I guarantee you if you played the song, I would clap at the right spot. Does that get me anything? I mean, yes, I do believe that it would get you something. I mean, it's also when you hear uh, someone doing uh, Deep in the Heart of Texas. If they <laughs> clap the right amount of times, you know they're a Texan. Yes. If they clap the incorrect amount of times. You're going to be ostracized, probably probably tarred and feathered, you know. Four? Okay. Oh, no, it's the stars at night. Yeah. Are big and bright. One, two, three. Oh. Oh, Justin. Wait. <laughs> no, I was still thinking of friends. <laughs> I have seen parts of the episodes, and I do quote it all the time with my wife because she it's her favorite show of all time. So I know, can I be wearing any more clothes? Chicken? I could eat some chicken. See, I, I think I'm borderline a diehard right. Friends fan. I take back everything I said. There you go. <laughs> Now I can easily say that the views of TCH Live may reflect the views of <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's happened before. I've given some speeches at the TDA Summit where they had to make sure uh, everyone was aware that I was speaking on my own behalf and not necessarily <laughs> the views of the TDA. And I'm sure Matt was very appreciative of that fact. But uh, now we take a look here. Ace, eight of diamonds, pocket sevens for Caesar. Pip it. <laughs> so Chender all in. Cesar makes the call with sevens, but Mike's right behind him with jacks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We could be looking at another monster hand here. We're getting a good view of the back of Caesar's head. An interesting position. All in and a call. You look down at Jax in the big blind. And it's going to cost Mike everything in front of him to make this call. And it looks like an easy decision when you can see the holdings of everybody on the table. Of course, you know you're leaps and bounds ahead if you're looking at the graphics like we are. But at the same time, you know, you really want to stake your tournament life after an all-in and a really quick call from Caesar at that. That's got to convey some kind of power. Yes. The answer to your question is yes. I would like to risk my tournament life, uh, get him in there, and as a reminder, I don't make many final tables. <laughs> There you go. Another contradictory hammer to us as he will find the muck with the jacks. And now Chunder going to be going for his tournament life here. Two overs against the under pair. And ace in the window. What a fold by the jacks. So incredible. The three of clubs hits the turn. So it's got to be a seven and only a seven. Six percent of the river. It's the King of Diamonds, so how about that? Chunder finding the double at the expense of Caesar's Sevens. Yeah, we can see that he's way ahead with the Jackson. Mostly kidding, but the fact that uh, people are able to make that fold, like we could see the cards, like you said, it's easy to know. Oh yeah, that's the spot we're supposed to get it in. But uh, he's Mike has done really well in poker tournaments. Uh, around the area and in other parts. And I think a big part of that is because he has the ability to pull jacks, and a lot of people don't. They look at a big hand and they get it in there. He thinks it, thinks it through. Uh, that time, maybe it was right or the wrong or 
wrong for the right reasons, or however you want to say it, but... Uh, I mean, we talked about the ICM being alive. We begin again with the payout of our tournament. Next out's going to be $4,620, so it is a $1,000 ladder that he's looking at Yeah. if he is incorrect in his assessment, which he, he was correct this time in hindsight. Yeah, hindsight correct. Yeah. That's the best kind. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you can see some, some split in the chat there, too. Again, he... AC telling us he told us Mike was tight. He did. Nothing no, nothing better than a, I told you so than showing uh, someone full Jack's free flop. Well, but, there you go. Yeah. But Lego comes around again with the hindsight. Good fold. <laughs> Absolutely. Good fold. Lego. <laughs> good fold. You can see Kirk there, the paparazzi, getting the work done. Yeah. These are uh, being reported on... PCHTournaments.com. You can see uh, some live updates, hand histories, chip counts, things of that nature. Obviously, lots of information available on the app now that wasn't in the past. You can see chip counts throughout the tournament being updated on the app. It's true, and it's not just the big tournaments, too. It's going to be the smaller ones that may not get a final table broadcast. You know, like the giant stack out there in the main card room, you can follow that one with updates and chip counts as well. Absolutely. It's uh, for every tournament during this series. Every tournament on the Poker Atlas Tour stop entirely, but uh, I believe that TCH is even doing it on some of their regular tournaments. It doesn't even have to be part of the tour. That is a uh, Poker Atlas capability. It doesn't even have to be part of the tour, but any property that is lucky enough to use Poker Atlas has the capabilities of doing said things because that's just a uh, benefit to the software. Get back around here. Mike in the small blind. Little offsuit king. Of course, we know Hammer's jamming on those, but mm. does find the fold here. Han opened with king eight offsuit. And here comes Chunder with a suited ace. And definitely wants to see a flop with an ace like that. But of course, you know, with kicker problems, especially facing an early position raise, you got to be a little bit weary. He does flop top pair. Han picks up a gutter ball to a 10 for Broadway. Does have backdoor diamonds to his credit. You think it's pronounced Chunder Bing? I, I, I really don't think so. Go, why? <laughs> How do you not know? I, 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 I thought you were a Friends fan. I am. A, oh, I mean, in the show, yes, it's Bing. No, no, I'm talking about the player. Oh. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I set you up. You're getting, you, can you, you, I, you're getting canceled yeah, again. Yeah, there we go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Hammer has made it his personal mission. Yeah. To I'm going to keep asking the question to see if we can't get Wes canceled tonight. <laughs> Does go check. Check on the river. And the ace is good. Han did pick up a pair of eights on the river. Well, of course, at that point, he has to know he's not good. Yeah, but he does have a little bit more uh, showdown value. Some of the smaller pairs that might have been in there, he is now beating. But True, true. Just happy to get any kind of showdown value when you turn the cards over. Happy to get the showdown. Yeah, definitely so with a holding like that. Yeah, without, without them telling me you're drawing dead, go ahead and go to the cage. Not to get paid, to re-enter. So we want to talk about VPIP. Voluntarily put in pot. We got a zero percenter at our final table throughout our first 13 hands. Ashir with a zero percent V pip. Tony, the highest one at 50 percent. He's been the hottest runner so far. And uh, definitely makes sense. But he has a zero percent V pip, but a hundred percent of the pay jumps so that far. That is so. very true. <laughs> uh, take it for what you will. Now, there was a time today where we thought Han was going to be a no show for, for uh, day two. They started off with a table breaking and reseating, and Han just disappeared for a while. Oh yeah, I remember that. I didn't, I didn't piece it together that it was him, but I remember seeing the stack. The trivia episode: Chandler Bong was the answer. <laughs> no, on. it's a, but it's there. I don't. There's too many letters in there. Chandler Bong. Chandler. <laughs> it's pronounced Chandler. There you go. Big of the devil. He's going to bump it up here. 235000 but Raj right behind him with pocket tens. I think he will be playing this hand. 
I definitely think so. And the blind on blind crime that we see so often at a no limit hold'em table. And Ross just gonna make the call here. Very sneaky. So we go to the flop. It's an ace high board, ace jack jack, two hearts. Raj with backdoor hearts along with his pair. But Chander gonna bet out. Definite spot where you can sell most jack x holdings at least. Yeah, not the best looking flop for tens. Really isn't, no. But Raj. I mean, we know the kind of player he is, and that is a great one, and he's going to stick around. Yeah, not ready to give up just yet. Let's see if uh, Chunder finds another bullet in the chamber here. As he it does snap pick up checks. a pair. We go to the river. It's a five of clubs, so both players with two pair, and looks like it goes check, check. Tens are a monster. And Raj will take down the pot. So, Mr. Hammer, I understand the weekend is coming to an end for the Atlas Tour, and it looks like this is going to be the week of mixed games oh, for the yeah. Atlas Tour. Oh, so, this yeah. is your, your week. You've been looking forward yeah. to this one. Yeah, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got uh, Omaha 8 or Better tomorrow, one of my favorite games. I Definitely. say one of because I like all of them. Uh, we have... I'm looking forward to the uh, dealer's choice. I know we've done a 10 game in the past, but I'm not sure that we've done a dealer's choice here. Uh, but on Tuesday, triple, triple draw, one of my favorites. Actually, I played the triple, triple draw at TCH in Dallas. And <laughs> don't mean to brag, but briggity brag, I technically final tabled. By that, I mean I got knocked out at the same time as the other guy who would have final tabled. So technically, <laughs> I say technically, I never sat at the final table, but technically, I did cash. I made a few bucks. Oh, yeah. Uh, dealer's Choice on Wednesday. These are all 2 o'clock starts and $300 buy-ins. Dealer's Choice on Wednesday. Then we got a PLO, $600, 10K guaranteed for first. That's going to happen on Thursday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The days of mixed games leading right into our title event for all of us, uh, all of you, two card players. <laughs> for those of you who uh, like two, any two will do. No limit hold them. We've got a uh, title event starting on Wednesday. 500,000 guarantee. Looking forward to that. But yeah, mixed games every day at two o'clock starting tomorrow. And we go to a flop here. Nines against the suited connector. And the suited connector hits the board. Does pair sixes, does have backdoor diamonds. We'll see if Mike elects to lead here with nines. Again, the raise from the cutoff, a call from the button. Does elect to go at it. Looks to be another 200K. No, 150K. Gets called. And to the turn we go. Ace of hearts. That's probably going to slow everybody down. Yeah, ace is always drawing live to be in uh, everyone's hand. So scary card if you don't have one. Beautiful card if you do. To answer your question, uh, the John JC, we are down to our final seven players. And Mike's going to move all in, and what a move it was. Easy to chase away a lot of marginal holdings, even a few weak Queen X holdings. And we'll salt the wound a bit there, but again, may think he's salting the wound. Yeah, but showing the blast hand. Yeah, uh, value bluffing is uh, what we call it. Is, uh, is the Poker Atlas Tour coming back to Dallas? I'd love to play Houston, my hometown. Shout out, Ian. But can't always make it down there. Uh, I think there is a greater than zero chance that it comes back to Dallas. But uh, nothing official is there yet. But if I were a betting man, I would say very likely that we come back to Dallas soon. So be on the lookout. 
be on the lookout. We're kind of releasing in uh, chunks, so hopefully it comes out soon. But we have uh, lots of stops that are uh, booked unofficially, and we have some that are booked officially, including uh, Thunder Valley next month, May 10th through 20th, Ooh. and uh, Best Bet in St. Augustine. Yeah, that's uh, Thunder Valley, definitely my favorite stop on the Run Good Tour. I always try to get out there. So yeah. You're, it's... So you're, now you're threatening me with a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Thunder Valley is uh, my home away from home. I spend a good chunk of the year there running tournaments with them. Uh, it's a great place, but Poker Rally Tour will be there, and then Best Bet St. Augustine do June 6th through the 16th. <laughs> Those are all official, announced, posted right. in Poker Atlas, and uh, the rest of them are coming soon. Coming soon. So we take a look here. Raj, King Queen, off suit. On the button, going to bump it up a bit. Makes it 160K to go, and Han with a suited Broadway hand. All in, I think he said. And there it is. Han does move all in. And again, the opening range of the button is just so wide that you can chase away most raises with a three bet like that. But Raj here, you know, one of the best at playing the metagame. What does he think that I think that he thinks that I think yeah. I have? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. Uh, and if he does that, to perfection, he will sniff out that he is in fact the head. I think if he saw these cards, the chips would be in already. But oh, yeah. King Queen not suited. Uh, he's just oh, looks like he's getting he's the call already. Out. But you were talking about 08 a little bit. You want to throw a big uh, congratulations on one of your best friends, you know, Matt Savage, taking down the 08 on the WPT voyage. He did do that as he makes the call here. Here we go. We'll talk about that in a sec. Yes. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> Definitely so. So King, Queen, and Queen 10. Raj has Han dominated. We get everything into position. And Han with two diamonds. Raj does have a diamond covered on our draw. And two diamonds on the flop. Look at this. Wow. That evens things out a little bit. 60-40 going to the turn. On looking for one of 10 outs. The Jack not one of them. He's going to have to hope for it on the river. 10 or a diamond? 10 or a diamond. To the river we go. It's a six. And with that, Han is eliminated in seventh place. So a good run, a good work on the day for Han as he will collect himself a cool $4,620 plus the bounties he has pulled today. So good work, Han. Always uh, a pleasure to have you at the final table. He had that uh, beautiful young lady who's uh, with him right now help him pick one of the bounties that he pulled, and the one she pulled out was uh, worth $5,000. So he did. Uh, he was also one of the big drum bounty winners. He go out there and help him out. Service. That was quick as Roger. We wait to see what the bounty is. What was Han worth? <laughs> yeah, let's see. Oh no, he's showing the he's camera. He's showing the wrong the camera. The wrong camera. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can get confirmation on it. But nonetheless, we move right along. Four hundred. Four hundred. Yes, we did get confirmation. There we go. Four hundred. Uh, but yeah, Savage, uh, everyone who was part of the WPT on the cruise, for anyone who doesn't know, there was a voyage that went from Miami to the Caymans to uh, the Bahamas, uh, but it was an entire ship takeover, Virgin, uh, Virgin Voyages, and the whole ship was just poker players and, you know, the regular amenities that exist on a cruise ship. It was a lot of fun, but the... WPT uh, crew, their <laughs> talent, if you will, they all participated in every aspect of the crew. So uh, you could see pictures of Adam Pliska jumping into the pool on the uh, Red Scarlet night and a lot of them doing the scuba diving and going to the beaches. And Savage, what he did, uh, his favorite game is Omaha 8 or better. So he played in that tournament. It was the 660 and... Uh, of course, as he would tell you, if I play one, I should win it. And that's exactly what he did. There you go. And uh, took first play. He actually played against the local Houston legend. He uh, did. Danny Chang, heads up. Danny Chang, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and so Danny and him, they ended up making a deal, and the money amount was pretty similar, if not an even shot. But uh, Savage... 
got whatever edge they negotiated and took the win and the big chunk of the money and yeah rubbed it in everybody's face but it was his uh it's his favorite game and he only played one on the ship and he won it and so congrats to him for that and congrats to the wpt for uh amazing amazing cruise it was actually a lot of fun yeah, really i didn't good. get a chance to go but i did follow every aspect of it and got more and more jealous of every <laughs> yeah. one of you once i, I saw each picture i, I mean so. i i was working uh from sun up to sundown most every day past um, sun up to sun up most days but uh it was it was a lot of work but it was a lot of fun it was definitely worth it and uh everyone seemed to have a good time hopefully they do it again next year i won't say no i, no, I'll tell you I, I don't much. think i could say no to going on it next year and seeing how great it was this year yeah i if you get a chance i don't know anybody who went and regretted it so if they're out there find them and i want to talk to them and figure out why but very well it's All it's right, a if, ship full of poker and food <laughs> what? if you want to tell hammer what's wrong just call five 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 wait hold on let me give out savage's number oh no, there okay. you go <laughs> he could tell us what's wrong Zazer right. with a suited king a little hammer hand action oh Gotta yeah bump it up yeah 80k mm -hmm. No, I like to get it in there with a king that has <laughs> the same shape as a different number. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh it got way less exciting. Uh, way less, <laughs> yes. But uh, Tony does come away with middle pair. Caesar was, uh, did have a dominated free flop. Tony hits the nine to jump out into the lead here. And with second pair, we really don't see Tony going anywhere at this juncture. Definitely going to be in there for another street. Also knows that a lot of air balls are going to see bet a flop like this. Yeah, 165 is the bet. It looks like Tony is going to find the call here. So off we go to the turn. And there's a 10. That's going to bring the open ender into play for both players. And both players with the same open ender, but Caesar going to go ahead and bet at it. 650,000. If that doesn't look like a stop drawing bet, I don't know what does. see Tony 80% favor but again with two overs to your pair it is it doesn't feel that way I can guarantee you that does have the open ender but again at this point the bet sizing is telling a story and that story sounds like I flop top pair stop drawing of course we know better if a queen hits Caesar gonna come away with a bigger straight and Tony is gonna make this call so we go to a river and it's a harmless four of spades and all in goes Caesar great bet we'll see if Tony can sniff out the bluff and Sanjeev to answer your question the first place uh, finisher will take home just north of $32,000. I'll put the pay ladder up in just a moment after the hand is over. In a tough spot for Tony. Again, it is going to cost Tony everything he's got 
if he makes this call. Well, if he wants to make this call, we know if he does, he's going to end up doubling up. But a 3.615 million chip pot. And Sanjeev, I will show you in just a moment after the hand is over. Yes! And does yes. make the call! Look at that! Well done, Tony! Tony makes the call. He's 100% right. And wow! Tony becomes the chip leader at our final table. And while the pot is pushed, I'll go ahead, as promised, I will show you the pay ladder. So again, we are down to our final six combatants. Sixth place will take home 5,600 and change. Meanwhile, first place will take home $32,130. Second, just north of 20, just north of 13 for third. Then we get back into the five-figure payouts for fourth at just over $9,000. A beautiful call, a soul read, says Michael in chat. I do have to agree, that was a fantastic call, but a very gutsy move to jam by Caesar. In our blinds right now, 40,000, 80,000 with an 80,000 big blind ante. It is costing our heroes 200,000 chips in orbit just for the privilege of sitting at this table. And when you get to the shorthanded, six handed, and below situations, it is definitely going to start adding up quick. The orbits move so much faster. Second place is just north of $20,000. And third place, just north of $13,000, Sanjeev. Uh, Raj here, ace nine off suit and the hijack. And looky here, Ashir, pocket jacks on the cutoff. And the player with the lowest V-pip going to jam all in. Caesar's all in with a suited connector. And Tony, the chip leader of the table, the rate, the CB hand, 10-4. No thank you, sir. And Mike, with a hand you can double down with, not too much more. He will fold his option. And off we go now. Caesar in bad shape. As you see, 80-20, Jack's ahead of 7-8 suited. But we will go to a flop. Cesar hanging on for his tournament life. It's a 5-5-6 five, five, flop. Cesar flops open-ended. Still 70-30. Go to the turn, king of spades. So four outs for Caesar going to the river. Drawing at 18% for his tournament life and no. Caesar will be eliminated in sixth place. And the first hand that Ashir has played voluntarily winds up being a bountiful hand, pun intended. As we take another look here at the pay ladder with Cesar's elimination in sixth place, it means our fifth place finisher, our next out, will claim $7,010 for their efforts. And then fourth at just north of nine grand. Then we get into our five figure payouts 13,000, 20,000, and 32,000 to boot. So lots of money up there. And yes, I did see the comment earlier. It is a very top-heavy pay structure. 
You see the 0% has gone up to 6% after that hand. And again, laddering up the best way possible, taking out the opposition. Does also get a bounty pull out of it. So we keep moving right along here. Tony, the computer hand, queen seven on the button. He went for a monster monster. To... Anyway, that happened to me too. I was monster monster not too long ago too, right? <laughs> I was up there. At the, at the, the time, I mean, you, you, you really monster. I mean, you were way ahead of everybody. You have to suck to give all those chips away. <laughs> oh, you yeah, did. Mike with a I mean, Broadway holding away. here. Yeah. King 10 I'm off suit. Give them away to try to get bounties because the 20,000 was still oh, out yeah, there. Yeah, that's so, that's and sitting on about 1.2 million. For 400,000. Does have a... Couple of decent sized stacks to his left. There's Chunder and Raj. Air flop comes. King high. So Mike with top pair. Chunder with some catching up to do. And he is going to bet at it here. Of course, Mike checking top pair. And if you haven't already hit that like button, now is definitely the time to do so. And while you're at it, why not subscribe? Don't miss any action from any streaming Texas Card House location across the great Lone Star State. I mean, or else, we could just let's take take a look at the numbers, but we don't want to do that. It's been like an hour and ten minutes since he started the final. So Mike's just going to flat here with top pair as the pot floats to about a little over a half million. And he does turn two pair, so if he wasn't feeling his king was sturdy enough on the flop, he's definitely got to be happy with this turn. Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Hey, there's a glass right here, let me know. Mike going to check first option, Chunder checking right behind. And now to the river we go. The board will pair eights. And Mike again checking to the aggressor. And Chunder going to make a about a half pot size bet. A little over a half pot size bet. And always the thought in the back of your mind about the eight. Could easily see this just going with a call instead of a raise from Mike. Does make the call. It will be shown the bluff, but Chandler turns it over like he's got it. <laughs> and our final five combatants. And all fighting for that first place prize of a little over $32,000 this evening. But again, plenty of action coming your way when it comes to the Atlas Tour festivities. Again, the Triple Triple Draw Tournament featuring Ace to Five, Deuce to Seven, and Badoogie. We both win with Natural Nine. 
Yeah, my personal favorite game in the mix, Badoogie. Gotta love it. Poker in its purest form. Does he have it or is it a bluff? Two decisions. King Deuce suited and hearts on the cutoff for Tilly. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be the bottom of your opening range on the cutoff. Five-handed, King Deuce suited. We'll chase Mike out. Chender with a eight off suit. He's going to move all in. A clean diaper for Raj is no good, and we'll see if Tony wants to gamble here. And Tony facing 970,000 to make this call. And with a suited king, we know what Hammer would do, don't we? Rip it. Rip it. And That's rip it. <laughs> when there's two things that are so difficult to do, like get a king and also have it be same suit, I just, I don't have it in me. I mean, let alone the odds of getting the deuce as your kicker. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, as I would grip it and rip it. Who's been on more of a roller coaster than Tony? Just <laughs> up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, down, down. And then up, 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 up. <laughs> and Tony will make the fold. Yeah, it looked a little more painful, but as we check in here, the giant stack, no limit hold'em giant stack. Oh, we're in the money, cool. and we're down to our 18 final two tables. That's a cool little cutaway. I like that. Oh, yeah. Well, 18th place, taking home 870 bucks in that monster. 262 entries. 262, a $65,500 <laughs> not, prize pool. Not bad for a little one-day event. 50K no. starting chips. It, it's $15,000 for first place. I mean, it's a great structure, too. 30-minute blind levels. You know, let's slap that 50K guarantee on it. You got the best tournament in Houston by far. Uh, that was a that was a good tournament today. That was, <laughs> man, I wish I could have played that. Oh, then definitely. we did the same thing on Super Speed, the Giant Stack Turbo. Ooh. Same levels, same starting stack, just 15-minute uh, levels instead of 30. Faster. So. Uh, I thought it would be fun, you know, if you bust the big one to play the faster one. End up finishing before that one, probably. But Absolutely. Uh, we had 47 players play that turbo, so there's a little bit of added value to it. A little bit, not too nice. much. Yeah. but Didn't get stung too bad. So we look, Tony here, the hand that tried to double through him not a moment ago. <laughs> Hammer getting called out in chat. Ladies and gentlemen, oh boy. Where? Norman oh, yeah. Chad. <laughs> Let's take a look see. Chad owes me 175 bucks. Hammer owes me 125. I wouldn't mind getting 275 <laughs> via Venmo from one of them. That's a $25 saving, he would go on to tell us. I told you I will pay you as soon as I get it. But if you've been listening to any of this, uh, I don't gamble very well. And uh actually if you just let me borrow another 125 i promise <laughs> i will pay you back 300 <laughs> as soon as i can uh, hold the phone here as we've got a clash developing here chunder with nines gonna flat the raise from mike with ace jack after tony just flats with ace high of his own i think i can hear the Jets roaring up in the bloodbath right now. <laughs> then you got the hand that really doesn't belong. Lots of aces in here. Norman actually uh, getting back at me because I I did some uh, 
photoshopping of him today, and uh, <laughs> there was a fun picture of him on Twitter that I thought that I thought deserved, uh, you know, to be recreated a little bit. So he's, <laughs> I think he's coming back. He's coming back to get me. The TCHY blood feud <laughs> exclusively on our Sunday show. But Mike here is going to move all in with ace high. Chunder with nines. Can he sniff it out? And check the holding. I don't think the cards have changed. Always get a kick out of that when a player feels the need to check their cards again after already having two streets of action. Yeah, I wonder, like, what... I do it too, and I'm one like I want to see something better. You know, you want to create a better hand, but then I always wonder like, what would I do if that actually did happen? Like, <laughs> if I look at my nines for the sixth time and they become tens, and now I got top set, I'm gonna be like, oh, I call. You just read this eight times. I mean, but then you get the whole table. It took you that long to call with, <laughs> yeah. with top set. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't understand. I had to will them in to exactly. be a better hand. <laughs> You know, a board like this where a set of tens looks practically unbeatable. No one's going to call your raise with the suited connector 6-7. I mean, possibly if we were at, yeah. you know, more, more deep of a stack than we are now. Yeah. But... So, something exciting happening in the background over there. Oh, definitely so. Yeah, the main card room booming. You can see just over the head of Chender. You can also see the slick looking Atlas trophy right next to his hat. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a good looking trophy. That's gonna yeah, go to is. whoever wins this tournament. Of course we give away a trophy for every event on the Poker Atlas Tour. Yeah, it looks like Chunder does find the fold and he's gonna get shown a bluff. An actual bluff this time. You played it like you had an overpair to the board. You know, AC, I am kind of baffled by the question here. Being on the final table stream. I don't. I have not played a streamed final table at uh, TCH, anything like that. I haven't played on a stream table in a little over a year. Truth be told, could you elaborate a little more? Because I'm I definitely want to answer your question, but I'm gonna need a little more information to do so. Maybe it means learn anything from doing commentary. On oh, I mean, I. Stream, so. Oh, you know what? I do remember this question. Yes, you did ask it to me. I was I was dealing actually when it happened. Yes, uh, I do learn a lot from doing streams like this. You know, I'm more I'm more of a tournament player than a cash player, and uh, so doing tournament streams like this is my bread and butter. I absolutely love it. But learning what to do and what not to do in cash games has probably been the biggest learning curve for me as an analyst, as a broadcaster. So, my New Year's resolution, in fact, Mr. Hammer, was to become a better cash game player. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think How's I'm holding going? myself to it. You know. Okay. I'm, I'm not stuck this year in cash, so. <laughs> uh, AC, if you were asking me, I have learned absolutely nothing from doing final <laughs> table streams. I am just as terrible today as I was yesterday and the day before, and every stream I do is just a reminder at why I got into the only aspect of this business where I can make a profit, <laughs> and that is on the operations <laughs> side. I do enjoy the game very much, but well, I, I, I mean, need to find a way to make enough money to gamble, and that is not by gambling. <laughs> I mean, they usually say those who can't teach, but based on your philosophies, I don't think I would hire you as a teacher. Yeah, that. no. <laughs> I, if you want to learn how to run a tournament, I got you. There you go. If you want to learn how to play at a final table of one, uh, I, I'll sit next to you while you tire. <laughs> I would listen. I would take AC lessons for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. First chapter of his book, uh, show up to a satellite be awarded the seat because they don't make you play them anymore when you win every one. Go play the tournament and cash. There you go. The Satellite Gladiator, AC. Oh, wow. One of, uh, as we see, a three bet here. They have the same hand, Tony and Raj. 
Tony three bets with it, the suited version. A million straight. Or it's Raj. He and Tony, the big stacks at the table. With the given the ICM implications, Raj has to make a decision on whether or not I really want to get tangled up with the other big stack and play a big pot. Let alone let's say the flop comes up, you know, ace high, but two, two clubs on the board. Yeah. You know, that, that could end in a bloodbath. But he, he will just fold. Yeah. He will make the full. I do think it was more of an ICM thought than anything else that led to it. Shows the ace, which probably makes him feel pretty good about folding the ace nine. He probably oh, yeah. assumes that any ace he would three bet with is better than the ace nine. Significantly higher than a nine, yes. Yeah. But uh, AC, actually, one of the coolest tournaments I did in Houston, AC was a big part of it, and there was a second chance. It was the H-Town special, and anyone who played the tournament and busted was able to play a second chance tournament on day two, and you had to have played one of the earlier fights, and whoever won the second chance tournament got put right into the final table of the of the H-Town special. Interesting. So there was, I don't remember how many, 200 something probably that played the second chance tournament that had all played the first one and AC won it. And I uh, timed it as such that the first place for the tournament would be about the same as ninth place for the main tournament. And he won it and came in uh, to the final table and ended up getting two pay jumps. It was pretty great. <laughs> Definitely so. I mean, that's an interesting concept. I think I don't remember hearing about that one, but I do like it. I do like it a lot. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, but AC crushed it. Crushed it. And blinds have gone up. We are at 50, 100, 100. So now it's going to cost our heroes a quarter million in orbit just for the privilege of sitting at this final table. <laughs> and Chunder finds an ace and he's going to jam it. Two spots, he says. Two spots. I laddered up two spots. There you go. Yeah, I knew he definitely got at least one, but it ended up being much better than just winning the uh, second chance tournament. I knew that. Probably 3x what first place would have been. So I know with all the mixed game frivolities coming up, we're going to have some really awesome tournaments. PLO, we're going to have our triple, triple draw, our 08. Dealer's choice, though. How many games do I get to choose from to punish every? I mean, to play with everybody? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's 17 games that we have in the mix. Something like that, it feels right. It's uh, mostly the ones that you would see in other uh, dealer's choice formats, but there's a little bit a little bit uh, difference in there to some that are more. We didn't want to scare too many people away, but we wanted there to be a good mix. As we see an all in there with Ace go. 10. And Tony, the big stack with an ace of his own on the button. Oh, he's eyeing. That chip stack like a hungry man looking at a sandwich. Sanjeev, this was a $600 buy-in tournament. $600 buy-in mystery bounty. So mystery payday mystery, mystery bounty. Mystery bounty. Mystery payday. There payday mystery bounty, yes. Payday is the uh, Poker Atlas brand. <laughs> we'll, we'll elaborate on that in just a second. Uh, Don't think I was going to let that go unheard from. Oh, uh, no. I, <laughs> let's see what's going on. How do I scroll down? <laughs> and Tony will find the fold. Mike, however, I don't think he will find it the same fold. I don't know. If you ask AC, he will. He says he's... Uh, AC does say he is the tightest player at this table. While he thinks about it, James asked how many chips would he get to take to the final table in that format. 
Talking about what uh, the tournament that AC laddered up on, uh, I believe it was five big blinds or match the shortest stack at the table, whichever was less. That makes sense. Yeah. He does fold. Oh, oh my goodness. Chundra's Let's see what happens there. here. So no one told you. Oh, look, we changed the spelling on those. There you go. And as you can see, AC with the response right there. Match the lowest chip stack. He had six big blinds going into that final table. There we go. Oh, it must have been 10 or the lowest. That sounds right. What a bargain for me. Oh, Mato, watch out. I like you. <laughs> and again, also got to take into effect the tightest player, perceived player in VPIP at the table just jammed. I mean, it jammed, what, 11 and a half big blinds? Yeah, and you have to factor in that he has pocket aces in his name. Uh, that is true. You're already behind just by sitting down at the table with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if Chunder makes this call and ends up getting outdrawn, he'll be left with about one and a half bigs. And there it is. He does make the call. Gets it in there. Going for the bounty. All right, less than a big. My bad. About 95K behind. Sevens against Ace-10. Let's race. The classic coin flip. And the Ace comes away on the flop. So Chender needing to get Whoa, lucky, and he does! Look at is. this! <laughs> you can hear him whooping in the background as Chender will eliminate us here in fifth place. We take a good look at just what he's going to be taking home. Mr. Hammer, tell him what he's won. It's... Uh, we don't know what it was. Uh, right. Was that yeah, fifth place? Yeah, fifth place, place seven thousand. <laughs> you put me on the spot for oh, softball, man. and I still struck <laughs> out. Seven thousand ten dollars for fifth place. Great job. Uh, got lots of ladders by being very patient there, and then just win the flip and uh, lost it the tough way. It is. The funnest way to win a flip and the toughest way to lose one where you get, where you get ahead on the flop and then go behind on the turn. Look, I'm trying to tell him, face that way. $400, 400. Oh, man, what, 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 what jinx. What jinx and now uh, Hammer thought I forgot. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, let's here on. we go. Let's, let's bring it up. Norman had some fantastic insight into the mind of Justin <laughs> Hammer. He has a slow learning curve as a poker player, ask his table mates. As a husband, ask his wife. As a father, ask his kids. I think he was running Radio Shack when they went bust. Oh my goodness. Uh, I have never worked at a Radio Shack for the record. Uh, I, I did run a Circuit City though, so I might have been. Oh I, my I, I might have I might bear some some responsibility here. I mean, I'm looking around the broadcast booth for some aloe vera because that's got to burn. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I told you you don't want to cross Norman Chad because then he uh, he will come he will come with the fire. He will come with the hot fire. That's evidence of the burn we're dealing with. Now. <laughs> yeah. No justice in this game. Okay, so players here are. Uh, we are about to look at numbers. They wanted to check out an ICM chop, so uh, this is actually a scheduled color up as well. So decided to do the race off uh, and then go ahead and let them look at the numbers. So we're doing two things here. We're checking out an ICM chop and we're doing a. Chip race. There you go. Actually, this is going to be interesting. A lot of people don't actually see the chip race too often, especially if they're not uh, like religious tournament players. As you can see there, how it works is all of the small denomination chips are going to be sold to the biggest stack. The biggest stack will then give them in turn 
the same amount in the bigger chips. Any stragglers are going to be raced off, and that's going to be done with the deck of cards, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some people come into my uh, defense in the chat, but uh, <laughs> Norman is a friend. He is needling me in good fun, and I, there is there is no uh, no offense taken, none necessary. It is it is okay. He is, he is a friend, and it is in good fun. It's okay. Uh, yes, that is the real Norman Chad who is in the chat. The Norman Chad. Might come in and uh, say something to prove it. I don't know, but yeah. Uh, he is a buddy of mine. And he is here being supportive and needling me at the same time. So I will always take it. I mean, you're, you're real friends of the ones that needle you. <laughs> Even on a live broadcast in which we've got not uh, not a small audience at all. We got, a, <laughs> we got a good size audience tonight. So oh, if hey. anybody else has any information about Justin Hammer would like to call into the show, <laughs> uh, all you got to do, just drop us a line in chat. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely exist out there. So uh, have at it. Maybe, uh, maybe my uh, mom wants to come in and needle us a little bit. Well, uh, all the chips are going to one player. This is a fun learning experience for anyone who doesn't know how to do a uh, chip race, but basically one player buys all the denomination and the extra chips. You get a card for every chip, and then a player buys all those excess chips with however many uh, of the next highest denomination there are, and then we take them all out of play. It's a way to keep uh, the chips as consistent as possible, but also get the odd chips out. So uh, we did that part. And now we're going to count those chips up and see see what kind of deal they want to make. That one was sitting there, an odd chip off by itself. So if you look, uh, we're putting the chip counts into the into Poker Atlas. Yeah, that's how you can follow all of the live tournament updates as well, in case you're wondering. That's how it's done right there. The dealer actually puts them into the Atlas tablet on the table and we'll give you a quick update here so with the removal of the blue 5k chips all that we have left are the red 25ks and the white 100ks which alan lee affectionately refers to as the stormtroopers the stormtroopers storm oh troopers. i like that i yes. i i when he pulled them out today, I thought they uh, they kind of looked like hardwood. I thought they were uh, laying the hardwood, but I like stormtroopers. The black and white is really good, but yeah. it looks it it looks just like uh, the kind of wood that you might have in like a fancy house that's by the water, like uh, where everything inside is white, and they got some sort of like uh, table that matches everything, okay. and I don't know what it's made out of or how they make it. It's uh, been a while since I've lived on the West Coast, but it is drumming up a lot of memories. <laughs> <laughs> it just, these chips are very sharp, and I like when places have 100K chips that are unique and special, and so you get them, and you're like, it's cool because you have to be deep enough in a tournament to necessitate 100K chips, mm -hmm. uh, so you're probably doing really well in the tournament, and then it's cool because you uh, get to experience a new chip. You know what that I really miss sharp. is very unpopular opinion. Ooh, I, I love miss unpopular. the European style chips, the plaques. You know, those 50K, those 100K little plaque looking chips. You've been trying to get canceled the entire stream. I know. So, I mean, you know you just, well, I'm just, just going to go ahead and do, just keep to you know, another I, one. I may be the one trying to get canceled, but I'm not the one getting needled by chat. So. Uh, oh, okay. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I actually did a tournament at Bay 101 right before uh, the cruise. And they still use the plaques. They really? have, uh, that's what they use for 100K instead of chips. So at the final table, we had uh, probably 6 million worth of plaques. So 60 of those plaques. And there, they're so thick and heavy that if you get a good chunk of them, you can actually shuffle them. And it has the same effect as chips. So you know that you're doing really good if you get the 100K plaques and you shuffle them. Oh, yeah. You're shuffling the plaques. You're in for a good payday. That is for sure. So we are counting everybody's chips now. 
putting in the payouts and they're having me come up with the ICM numbers for them to look at and then they are going to discuss whether or not they want to take it or if they want to keep playing or if they want to negotiate it a little bit. Some of the rules I did, there's not a whole lot, but in regards to how the tournament is reported and how we discuss it, it is whoever gets the most money is declared the winner. There is a Poker Atlas trophy that we talked about. Whoever gets the most money gets the trophy. So they could do a lot of things, but they either make a deal that ends the tournament and the money decides who wins, or they renegotiate the prize pool a little bit in so in such a way that whoever wins the tournament will get the most money and therefore be declared the winner and get the trophy. So we had a little bit of a discussion about that, and then the players got their ICM numbers, and I don't know how much of it we'll be able to hear, so I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to spoil it in case there's... But I do know that Tony and Raj both have very similar stacks. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Show me Hammer. some of these cool graphics oh, buttons. Some of these that, cool right? graphics. Yeah, oh, right? don't touch that. No. Oh, 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 you know what? You clicked the right one. There hey, we go. Oh, there see? We go. <laughs> okay. Over one million in guarantees. This is the series that's going on right now. We just went through the opening weekend. We still got uh, tons of events left. What did we get through? Three? We only got Four? through three. But of course, you know, the fan favorite, which is actually going to include an Atlas trophy, yes. is the Friday Mayhem Super. The Friday Mayhem. Hey, yeah, I, I think it's a little bit different. $50 buy in for the Poker Atlas version. And, it's true. Uh, that is going to happen on Friday. Friday is going to be a busy day. I would get here. Early, definitely so. On Friday, on Friday uh, we're gonna have how we pack the house normally on a Friday. Yeah, so we're gonna have tournament. the title event. We're gonna have we're gonna have this event, and then we also have a satellite. And uh, the cash games have just been off the hook over oh, here. So uh, going to be, I would get here early, check Poker Atlas, get yourself on the list, get signed up for the tournament as early as possible. Uh, I would recommend playing the title event. Definitely. Uh, and then roll into anything else if you're not lucky enough to bag. But Friday's going to be a very busy day here at TCH in Houston, and I am looking forward to it. I mean, you know the cash action's good when you have to drag Justin kicking and screaming away from a 1-3 PLO <laughs> yeah, table. That's right. But... <laughs> that's right. And if you drag me away, the table's going to be kicking and screaming too. That's bring, true. Bring that guy back. You may uh, make the mistake of spearing the table whale, and they just get up, take their ball, and go home. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think you can go. I'm telling them the numbers. Uh, actually, I still have them right here, so right. I can tell you. Let's take a quick The look. number uh, that Tony was getting is about $21,000. Mike was getting fifteen. dollars Five, Chunder was getting 16.6, and Raj was getting. But these numbers are actually important because I think it was the deal breaker. Uh, Tony was getting 21.360, and Raj was getting 21.60, like 21.060, so which was $300 less. Both, both the chip leaders would be sacrificing what looks like 10 grand. Uh, yeah, they yeah. would both be getting more than second place money. So yes. in that aspect, it's pretty good. But uh, one of them really wanted the win and to uh, earn it. So it did end up being a deal breaker. And they continue playing. And we continue. All right. Well, four-handed. And again, it's costing our heroes a quarter million in orbit. So things are going to start to move at a pretty brisk pace at this table as we check back in with Tony under the gun with ace high and shorthanded any ace high holding really a monster yeah absolutely I never know what to do in spots like this or what to think because 
You just talked about a deal. You have a slight lead, like very slight. And now you have a hand. Does that factor in the conversation that you just had? That you're you're going to keep playing, and somebody is just slightly behind you. Do you play and risk going up against the person you just negotiated against? Do you get a little more snug? Just a tough spot. I probably would have done the same thing. Just I don't know how to come right off a conversation like that and play Ace Four. So I'm going to wait. More than fair. Well, how about a suited king? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I would be doing. Take these new chips you just got. Rip it. And rip it. Uh, Mike here makes it 350K. That's going to chase away everybody in the process. But again, since there was no deal, let's take another look-see at our ladder. And fourth spot. Will be taking home nine thousand one hundred sixty dollars. Third place thirteen sixty. Twenty thousand one sixty to second, and first place thirty two one thirty. Again, it's hard when you're one of the chip leaders to say goodbye to the potential of ten extra thousand. So I can yeah, yeah. possibly another reason why this deal fell through. You know, it's definitely not easy to just uh, kiss ten grand goodbye. Yeah, and something to consider when you make deals like this is a lot of times people uh you know if you pass it up you're not getting the fullest potential or you're giving up a guaranteed 20 when just because you're going for 30 and a lot but a lot of times what happens also is you lose one of the shorter stacks and then you make the same type of deal but it's worth a lot more maybe three or four thousand dollars more and true. sometimes that factors into players it's not if you say no to this deal, you must play to a winner. It's if you say no to this, maybe we approach it again maybe, after yeah. we lose a player. Maybe after we lose two players, then it's just the two of us. Now we're talking about the same deal, but it's more, you know, twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollar range, something like that. And right. uh, I think sometimes these chip leaders aren't just thinking, hey, I have to beat this other chip leader. It's I might be able to just outlast some of these short tur stacks even though nobody is super short but some of these short tur stacks and get that ladder and then start talking about price when maybe i can get a little bit more than what i'm getting right now but always encourage people to do whatever they feel is right and if you're here to play and you want to try and win a tournament which is how the tournament is designed it is absolutely okay to keep playing and not accept any deal, even if it's an amount of money that's really good or if it's a deal that many people would find favorable. If you came because you wanted to play this tournament to a winner, then that's absolutely what you should do in any circumstance, regardless of how much money it is or what the other players at the table want to do. I mean, and that being said, in you know, mid-stakes tournaments like this, you know, $600, you know, you're going to see a lot more deals proposed. You're going to see a lot more deals go through. Of course, you never see any high roller deals uh, being made at that point because let's let's take a look here at a difference between a hundred thousand dollar pay jump from second to first. Nobody is going to give up that kind of pay jump, or even that opportunity if you're second in chips to ladder up, possibly suck out on the chip leader. Right, we got to look there at the uh, giant stack clock again. But yeah, to your point, this tournament. Uh, it's a $600 buy-in, and yet, obviously, $10,000 is $10,000, which Absolutely. is a lot of money. But in regards to a $600 tournament, I mean, it's less than 20 buy-ins for this tournament. So if you're right. looking at them in regards to uh, the buy-ins, and that happens in a bounty tournament because a good chunk of the buy-in goes to the bounty pool. So the prize pool is only a chunk of what this buy-in was. So the jumps in regards to buy-ins isn't anywhere near as significant as a tournament this large would be normally for a $600 tournament. So I think playing in something like this should be encouraged even more because those pay jumps are less than what a normal $600 tournament would be anyway. Oh, definitely so. Yes, yes. I mean, one could argue that the biggest winner tonight would be Caesar taking home that 20k bounty, of course. <laughs> yeah, he might end up being. Uh, he, he very well could be. If he uh, well, that. Raj got the 10k bounty, so if he ends up with the uh, 10k and jumps, then I think he will be. Uh, he will uh, possibly win the most combined money. But I mean, that's the part of mystery bounties. Is the fun part is you gamble a little bit more. We have this element of 
it's not necessarily whoever plays the best or even runs the best who gets the most money in these tournaments. It's, you know, there's a little bit of a luck of the draw, a little bit of gamble element to it. I still think there's the strategy to give yourself a more favorable position, but ultimately, if you, somebody draws the big bounty on the first poll, it's not like there's anything right. you could do to prevent that. All you could really do... Uh, actually, Chandra was asking me when he had accumulated some bounty chips, what's the strategy? Like, do you think you should pull them early? Do you think you should wait and see if they go? And I said, I think the right strategy is get as many bounties as you can. Because <laughs> if you could knock out every player on day two, you're guaranteed to get the big bounty. But otherwise, all, all you can really do is give yourself the highest percentage chance of getting the big one by getting as many bounties as you possibly can. It sounds like a very yoga, Yogi Berra-ish thing to say. You know, not over till it's over, then it's over. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not over till it's over, then it's, then over. it's over. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> You want to get the big one, either uh, get really good at drawing or uh, give yourself as many pulls as you possibly can. Or in Han's case, have an assistant help you out. Have your bring your lovely assistant. Oh so, yeah, oh, yeah. That, was, that was that was uh, that was sharp. Right? Someone's oh, yeah. going to uh, ban the help of uh, significant others in the future. I'm sure, <laughs> just to make sure. No, no, he's got to pull his own. Uh, checking in now with Chunder, King Nine student. Raj has a suit in hand as well. Looks like he's more than happy to make this call. But no, no, he's gonna move all in. Oh my goodness! Maximum pressure on Chunder for sure. King Nine suited. Yeah, Raj probably knows that he doesn't want to. Put it at risk. He's, yeah, when they had the talks, he knows that uh, Chunder is having a really good time. He wants to stick around as long as possible and probably is going to be folding a significant portion of his range there. And I mean, uh, three, put, three and a quarter big blinds, that's kind of a, a bigger number to want to open fold with. Yeah. I mean, at this stack depth, maybe you could be comfortable open folding two bigs, but I mean, three and a quarter, that's getting up there a little bit. Yeah, then to his credit, one thing Raj made very clear is he is playing for the win. He would like to win this tournament. He would, the only types of deals he's interested in are the ones where he ends up with the uh, most money and all the glory and all those things. And uh, he is willing to play he's willing to gamble he's willing to do what it takes to put himself in the position to do that so uh i think it's evident by making that move there in that spot he is he's ready to play definitely so as chunder gonna go ahead and make the call here Two hundred twenty-five thousand. The computer hand here in the big blind for Tony. He'll stick around and we'll go three ways to a flop. Flop comes queen high, two clubs. Queen, Trey, deuce. Let's see who elects to stab at this. Tony's going to let everybody else take the lead after flopping top pair. And Mike reaching for some betting chips. Bet looks to be about the 250 range. So we know Tony not going anywhere with top pair right now. Backdoor clubs, a very real possibility. Instead, Tony going to jam all in and we'll get the snap fold from Mike. So again, that the feeler bet going out there. More, didn't really go the way he had hoped. Gars, trying to see if he can pick up more equity on that turn. But Tony going to punish you for trying to feel your way through the darkness. Yeah, and Rich with the assist there saying, uh, every once in a while we do a cutaway like we're doing right now. So can you make it so that the people watching at home can see the view? And now they're just, it's uh, Andrew's just blocking the uh, poker atlas sign instead. Poker Atlas Tour at TCH Houston. Yep, 16 events, over 1 million in guarantees. <laughs> oh, there's Happen the script. We found it. <laughs> happening now through the 22nd. 
ace high on the button for Raj. Definitely an open candidate. Goes with the same sizing, too. And we'll see Tony here in the small blind getting these suited hands, especially these suited, uh, suited, well, any Broadway card that's suited. You know, yeah. Short handed. You, know you know my stance oh, on such things. I, I do know your stance on such things. Rip it. <laughs> I, I can see you salivating right next to me. Rip it. <laughs> and we talked about the, uh, New Poker Atlas merchandise. I think the Grip It and Rip It yeah. shirt to make its oh, yeah. appearance. In. In on making that. In on buying that. In on giving it away at the final table to anyone <laughs> who finds a King X suited in piles. Especially as a, I'm sorry you listened to me prize that I give to them at the cage. <laughs> Uh, Mike here with King 10 sitting on 15 big blinds right now. And these are the hands, especially it's hard to fold and looky here. Mike's going to move all in with it. And Raj is a smart guy. He knows he's going to be doing this with a wider range from the big blind. that could include any Broadway combination. This yeah, time, and what I King 10. what I said earlier, the players also know, obviously. So uh, Raj knows that Mike knows that he said, "I want to play for this. I'm willing to play." He's seen him be aggressive, so Mike probably knows that he's raising his button a little wider. He's not just looking to ladder. He's not going to sit around and wait. He's ready to play. He's ready to do what it takes to win. So Mike probably thinking since his range of raising is so much wider that my range of shoving should also be wider in doing that. But I think that Raj knows that Mike knows that. So really thinking about if he's opening it up, how wide is he opening it up? And is an ace here good enough to call? Ultimately decides to lay it down. As we take a look at the top four payouts there that we're playing for, 9,100 guaranteed, 32,000 for first. And there's... 13 minutes left in this level. You can see 503 entries over the course of the uh, three starting days, including the turbo flight today. 75, 125, the next level. Man, we're just giving them all the levels. In this I know. I mean, the structure is impeccable. Wonder who we can thank for that. Some Somebody who likes being in the booth with you, apparently, <laughs> just to make it last as long as we possibly can. We go queen nine suited for Raj. He's going to open on the button again using the same sizing and not mixing up or discriminating between hands. He's getting they're getting the same treatment regardless. Yeah. <laughs> Hammer, you the man. There you go. Nick's in the chat for you. <laughs> Nick, my man. Nick was in. Uh, he was in the tournament today. He went deep. You got to. He got a few bounties himself. He even split a bounty with somebody else. But uh, there's a level in this tournament that Nick really likes every time it's in there and calls me out every time it's not because uh, he knows he knows what I'm doing. Uh, a tournament like this on the bigger buy-in and so much on the line. Yeah. Try to stretch it out on the back end to make sure when the money's on the line, there's enough play. And from what I can tell player with 60 bigs there's a player with 50 bigs short stacks have over 20 this feels like a pretty solid final table i do agree with you as mike has himself another broadway combination on the button and queen jack sitting on 21 big blinds right now and it's such an interesting power dynamic shift too let's say yeah mike opens from the button Looks to be about three bigs, about 275, almost three bigs. And then you get three bet for seven bigs. And now you're going to have to commit half your stack anyway. So you better be ready to go to war with just about any holding you have. Yeah. And Raj with ace high, I think we're about to see that same scenario. No, he's going to go for it all. Wow. Same thing. I think he knows. Uh probably a lot of hands that Mike will open with, but as AC said earlier, he is pretty 
tight pre-flop. So, you know, if you get snap called, you're in deep trouble. In but deep trouble. Uh, there's a lot of hands, maybe even some slightly better jacks that he gets away from in this spot. So Raj with the all-powerful ace is putting him to the test. Maybe sending a message. Uh, I'd be careful raising my big blind because, as mentioned earlier, I am ready. I am ready to play. I'm playing to win this. What do you think Mike does here? You know, I think Mike does find the fold. And if it goes right with the character he's been building all night, yep, definitely so. Very patient. Definitely, very patient. And patience is king in tournament poker. It really is. 13 left in the giant stack. Hey, hey, hey. That's a good tournament there. Yeah, 15K up top. Definitely not a bad payday. Not bad. $300 buy-in. One-day event. It's going to finish about the same time as this one, I guess. There's there's some uh, wagers going on amongst the ranks to see which one's going to finish first. I don't I don't know which side I'm on. I don't know what side you're on. I don't know. Whichever side is buying me margaritas tomorrow night, that's <laughs> the side I'm, uh, I'm against. So. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah, one of these days, two of our combatants will have a hand. But Mike, a little interesting open here from under the gun with a natural nine. Natural. And here comes Chander. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Raj going in to isolate. Tony's wow. got ace queen suited, but he'll they find must. the fold. Oh, my goodness. So Chander all in for his tournament life. Raj leaps and bounds ahead of him right now. That's 60-30. You know, it's not too bad. Could be yeah. a lot worse. And we know that each of those cards was folded. King for oh Chander. Boy. He comes up. That's a big flop for him. Takes the lead. An even bigger lead than it might normally be because an ace and a queen is gone. Ah, uh, now it's we'll over. call it yeah. now we'll call it insurmountable. Well, let's call it Dunzo. Yes, sir. So Chunder will find the double through the chip leader. And now the dynamic gonna shift a little bit. Yeah, and how lucky is Tony there that there was so much action in front of him that his ace queen shrunk because if those had been in different spots, he would have been the one who had all of his chips in there and he would have lost them. So well, I mean, let's say Raj decides to knit up real quick and muck muck there. You know, Tony's making that call every time. Yeah. Or even if uh, Mike doesn't open with the six three, it you have to factor all that in when you're Tony. There's every single player at the table is in the That's pot. True. It makes Ace Queen look. He doesn't know that it's six three or that he's folding. He just knows that uh, the tightest player at the table raised, and then somebody re-raised, and then somebody <laughs> went over the top who has a lot of chips. Like it, being able to get away from the Ace Queen in that spot was. Pretty fortunate. Oh, definitely so. But again, I expect nothing less from four of the best that Houston's got to offer when it comes to tournament poker. This has been a very entertaining final table. Connor with a big smile on his face for some reason. I wonder why. <laughs> you know, doubling up as a uh, 3 2 underdog will do that to you. Yeah, sometimes. that makes yeah. it. Yeah, hey, this game's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Opens with the ace, Raj. I do think that Queen 10 is going to fall well within the three betting range of Raj at this point in the game, but he is just going to flat with it. He does call. Maybe doesn't want it to seem like he's uh, steaming too much after that last hand. So, oh, but this will be interesting here. Mike with King Queen in the big blind. 13 bigs. Raising a call in front of him. I mean, this is value town right here. I can't imagine yeah. he's thinking about folding. I no. think calling and shoving are both options here. All right, let's see if AC can get in what he's going to do before he does it. Oh, too late. Oh, just going to make the call. And three players will see the flop. Let's see. 
Oh boy. And I think uh, everybody gets a little something here. Oh yeah, Raj has got himself a gutter. Chunder with top pair. Mike, second pair. I think we're about to see a pretty astronomical pot. That hat sure looks good on Raj. I'm that is that. a great That's, hat. That yes. is a good looking hat. You know, I wore my Poker Atlas Tour hat to a tournament, the Golden Nugget, and immediately the tournament director says, you know, we use Bravo out here, son. <laughs> and I said, not for long, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good, uh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so Mike here with King Queen. In facing a bet that will basically put him at five bigs, so about half his stack. Yeah, he's gonna have to go in just to see another card. So, in this, this is a spot. I mean, where oh my goodness, if you can hit a king and fold, this would be the type of spot. But I, I'm just calling with. 13 bigs, and I see that king, I, it's going to be tough for me to pull him. Definitely so. So another disciplined play by Mike there, as he has been proving time and time again he could do. All right. Well, you know, I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. PLO is Houston's game. As we go through our dealer change here, tell us about what's coming up for our PLO faithful. Oh, I love PLO. We've oh. got a $600 PLO tournament coming up on Thursday at 2 o'clock. We're guaranteeing first place will be at least $10,000, $600 tournament. Yeah, that's going to be a great event. If you like the great game of Pot Limit Omaha, uh, lots of... Cash games going on PLO if you want to get some practice in before the tournament. But always a good turnout for the PLO tournaments here in Houston. So get here uh, early. That starts at 2 o'clock. And come play away. It's the only PLO tournament we have on the schedule for this one. So definitely take advantage. If that one just absolutely crushes like I hope it does, uh, maybe next time we're in town we throw a few more, a few right. uh, varieties of it in there. But uh, that's... That's my game of choice. Speaking of variety, I do have a question for you after this hand is over. Uh, Mike, Kojak, offsuit. Questions are allowed. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And moving all in with it is Mike Chunder with an ace. And this may be another spot where table image comes into Mike's uh, advantage. I don't know exactly what he would be jamming with. Always tough to come in just oh fresh and have somebody go all in, need to count chips that you're not used to at all. So yeah. There you go. Blind on blind violence as it will be ace nine against King Jack. We'll wait for everything to get in position here. And off we go. Close to that little flip range where the flop does come up queen high. Good one for Chonder. Oh, yeah. Ace high, leaps and bounds ahead, drops to a three to one. And now the tray of spades means Mike's only going to get six outs. He can't pick up any more. And it, does I think that's one of them. On the I think that's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gets the full double, as my friend Ray Henson would say. The full double. So anyway, to the question. Yes, bring it on. So we talk a lot about PLO. We talk about um, Limit Omaha 8 or better. Yeah. We yeah. don't really talk about something that's been emerging more, off, more on the west side of the country, okay. which is NLO. No Limit Omaha? No Limit Omaha. Yes. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, no limit. The reason they do Omaha as a pot limit game is because you don't really need to encourage more action in that game. Like, pot limit is what gets it enough to where more people can actually participate in uh, the action. It turns it, it, turns it into a 
a more exciting game, a more action-packed game. No limit, Omaha. You just either get people going all in or everybody goes all in and calls and it's over. It's just uh, when you force people to slow down a little bit, then you wait until the strengths of the hands are a little bit more defined before they can uh, get it in there in, in a game that's super draw-heavy that actually increases the amount of action. But uh, no limit. It wouldn't surprise me on. Do not bring no limit there to we Houston. Go. Yeah. See, I, I so I want to clarify. I did not suggest we bring it here. I just wanted to get the Hammerman's thoughts on the game. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, uh, I I don't think the way that we do Omaha is in need of a change at the moment. So I. We all know I like to experiment. I like to do fun things. I like to mix it up a little bit. But uh, you know, if if AC says we can't have any. NLO no, and I Houston. Mean, that, that's the deciding factor right yeah, there. I, I, yeah, I you know, I'm not. You got to take Tiny into account, too. I mean, of course, you know. Yeah, I'm not uh, going to do anything to make either of those guys upset, so. The people have spoken, and yeah. NLO shall not PLO wear its it head. <laughs> PLO it is. I'd rather do something fun with PLO, like a PLO uh, mystery bounty or a PLO progressive bounty okay. or something, okay. something uh, like a new twist on the game, but the game as we already know it but definitely so you know the quick look here as our blinds have gone up we are now at 75 125 125 and just happened not uh, 60 seconds ago but again our four combatants have survived a huge field of 503 runners and these final four are not disappointing. Yeah, they yeah. see the a flip and go. <laughs> you mean flip those and are, go? Yeah, yeah flip got, and goes yeah. are a lot of fun. I tried some <laughs> flip and goes in Houston. They did not go well. So it's. I like to try fun things that people are willing to come play and experiment with me on. So it's. Just say no to NLO. There you go. Reagan administration AC, would be so proud. <laughs> AC puts the no in NLO. <laughs> Emphasis on the N O. <laughs> 75 125. What kind of psycho? I don't know what kind of psycho does that. I will, I will say this. It's not the psycho that I ran into on the West Coast where they had a 4,500, 9,000, 9,000 level. Stop. That was Just stop. sickening. Utterly Just sickening. Stop. <laughs> Just stop. I swear, they needed a cleanup on table seven. I was, it was that bad. <laughs> I can't even. wouldn't do that to the poor dealers. There's just I, so, I, many, I so many chips. <laughs> And Raj going to find the fold here to Chunder. Tony, without a doubt, going to fold Jack Deuce. 45-9-9 in a pot limit game. That would be oh that would goodness. be absolute cruelty to a I mean, dealer. I, I feel like uh, I've been through a war just thinking about that <laughs> with my dealing experience. <laughs> I'd like to bet the size of the pot, and I would like to help you with that, but I have no idea. I have idea. no idea what I'm betting. <laughs> But I can definitely assure you that uh, if NLO somehow makes its way to Houston, it, it won't be at Texas Carhouse. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it won't. Man, oh man, that is that is an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, I... my I think one of my biggest fears is waking up one day and seeing it on the WSOP schedule <laughs> as, a, as a last second edition. I mean, you know? you're always drawn live, but like <laughs> it, things have to get pretty popular before the WSOP yeah. uh, throws them in there. I mean, as evidence, they got bomb pot tournament, bomb pot bracelet events. This yeah, year, you know? yeah, but it's bomb pots had to be a thing for you know five years or so before they considered doing something like that. So it's yeah. I do think of that a. Uh, Bomb Pot Tournament, the one actually at Thunder Valley was the one time I successfully played heads up against Nick Shulman. Oh, but, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, yeah. But it takes a lot of the pre-flop thought out of it, of course, you know. Yeah. When I flop the nuts with Deuce 4 offsuit, and he bets into me with pocket jacks. 
<laughs> that uh, that helps. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Take a look here. Diamonds making a very real appearance. Tony with backdoor diamond outs. Pair of five still in the lead for Raj. Does check all the way through to the river we go. And there's a four. That's going to mean the seven three is going to chop. This is a straight. Mm, I don't know. Yes, you are correct. And Mike going to go ahead and bet at it. I mean, the nuts here, obviously, uh, diamond flush. So still plenty out there to worry about if you're uh, Tony facing that bet from Mike. Snap call. Yep. How do you play that junk, he says. <laughs> Flips over the same hand. What's it all in call? Oh boy. Yeah. I uh, I actually ran into Nick Schulman at the Poker Awards one year uh, in the restroom of all places, and we were next to each other as men tend to do, and uh, looked over, looked over at me, and uh, looked me right in the eye. I said, "Hey, Nick." And he said, "Hi." Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from a distance, I could see that happening. Maybe. Uh, and I I've said, seen you two yeah. stand next to each other before. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm not Matt." And he uh, squinted, just shook it off a little bit, and said, "Oh, his eyes. I mean, and he uh, looked at me and said, "Oh, hi, Hammer. <laughs> hey, hey, Nick." That's my Nick Schulman story. There you go. Uh, he's a nice guy. It he was, really is. Yeah. You don't ever make like full eye contact when you're in that moment. So no, he, gets, I mean, he gets a he gets a pass. I, mean, I, I would certainly hope not. I mean, that's a different story altogether with full eye contact. <laughs> I mean, especially when we get to the shake it off bit. Yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> 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 DCH Live Nation couldn't see just how hard I was laughing <laughs> during that story. I was, uh, <laughs> I was giving you an out. <laughs> I I didn't realize it until after I had said the word. There, there you <laughs> it, go. It could be interpreted differently. <laughs> Chander here with five tray facing the open from Tony with pocket trays. A little gapper like this. He thinks he's getting a good price, so we'll see a flop. Oh, oh man, what a price he got. Look at this. Yeah. Jumps out to the lead. Check. It's going to be hard to pick out a Chad MVP tonight, Justin. It's going to be real hard. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, appreciate everybody interacting with us. It makes the show that much more interesting to everybody else. <laughs> and checking the option over to Tony. Tony with a pair. Pair of trays. And he's going to bet at it. And any call here from uh, Chunder is going to set off alarm bells yeah. in the head of Tony. I mean, anything. It's really a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation when it comes to how much money you're going to put in this pot. He will just flat with it. And the only thing that could make this uh, better be a three on the turn. but <laughs> Yeah, that would be an exciting card. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll go check, check. Bet fold. What do you think? I think that is a fair assumption.
I think I'm wrong already. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Again, and picking up a flush draw and betting it on the turn. Very, very plausible story. In which case, Tony could still think he's ahead. Trying to bet him out of it here. If that's the, if that, he is putting him on a flush draw, there is going to be a definite raising coming. Oh, calls? Just going to flat here. 550, so this pot bloats. To a little over two million. And a king on the river. Now I think we're gonna see a check check situation. Unless Chunder starts feeling extra frisky here. Yeah, once I get it dead wrong, I stop guessing what they're gonna do. I just I'm watch and then maybe hope that I can edit it in post and <laughs> go back and get it right make a good prediction edit it in post on a live show yeah <laughs> justin hammer thought process <laughs> I, I never i never claim to understand how this works <laughs> i know every once in a while i come in here and i see myself on there yes he has trip fives Correct. That is, in fact, his hand. The only reason I bring it up, who picks, is because uh, watching him throughout the day, I did see a great deal of trapping from Chunder. And I watched this uh, tournament both as a dealer and as a floor manager today and saw some incredible traps being laid by Chunder all day. Well, plus, if you think that you're in a spot where where he was floating or if he had picked up a draw on the turn maybe or any of those. If you think he doesn't have anything he could ever call you with. He is going to ship it here. Then there are spots where you would want to check into them and give them a chance to bet. If they're folding every time, you want to give them a chance to bluff at it. I don't think this is one of those spots, but. No. No. It's true. Sub one SPR, definitely jam in this situation. But we take a look here. Tony with a bluff catcher. That's what he's got. Gonna talk, uh, call here from Tony. Gonna cripple him, but definitely not take him out of contention for taking home the title. It would, however, skyrocket Chunder into the chip lead. Yeah, I do think that this is going to be one of those you think long, you think wrong situations. Yeah. yeah. Although, I think he's trying to find a reason to call, but I I said I wouldn't guess anymore, but I'm going to guess he folds. All right. Nope. Oh, he does that move. I don't know what it's going to be. He does that move. It's like, it looks like he might keep the chips and fold the cards or like he might stack them and put them in and it does make the lay down got one yeah hey you got one yep <laughs> I got one see all right, I'll start giving you a little more credit, but let's check in on that second chance tournament we were talking about. They're down to their final five. They're in the money. And wow. that was a 10K guarantee, it if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, 3,100 to first place. Not a bad day's work for a little turbo. Nice little 240. 
Oh, yeah. 240, a, re a reduced juice tournament? Reduce the juice? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. And I almost guarantee that that tournament is going to finish before the giant stack. Uh, does, yeah. But... <laughs> yes. That's, uh, they are probably going to finish in the reverse order of which they started. <laughs> There is a lot of action going on out there. You can hear. King four suited for Mike on the button. I, I know. Is, I, if I gotta like tie the leash to the wall, I will. All right. Rip it. <laughs> Mike, uh, this should come as a shock to nobody. Mike, much better player than I. <laughs> Takes the much more patient, calm, passive, trying to win the tournament approach. Looky there. Hey, he's got backdoor hearts to boot. Hello, King Ball. Chandra picks up a pair of deuces. Raj with, uh, he's got he's got five cards, all right. Oh, yeah. You'll get to know now. And Chunder just going to make the call here, 150000 And Raj, looks like he's cutting out a raise here. Let me make it 800000 to go. Raj probably thinking that... Uh, Mike might bet a lot of flops here when it checks to him and feels like uh, Chandra is probably calling a little light, which would be correct. Mm -hmm. And that if he puts in a raise and he's right about Mike, then he could pick up all of that dead money. So coming in with a raise. Also, he's in the big blind, so he could have lots of hands. Lots of weird uh, two pair combos here. Absolutely. Uh, so, again, we can see the cards, so we know maybe. Well, actually, I don't even know. We'll see what Mike does. But I mean, he's made some tight laydowns. We've seen it all night. Yeah, but he's got. But see, the thing is here, he's got backdoor hearts to his name as well. It's going to be just making it that much uh, more difficult to lay down. And he's got the hammer-approved uh, grip it and rip it. Looks like he's really thinking about this one. Okay, someone let me know in the chat. What's happening here? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Grabs the chips. I predict he does not call. All right. Let's see if I uh, get to take away your guessing privileges again. <laughs> I predict a fold or a race. Oh my goodness, he will lay it down. And Shutter not going to do anything with deuces, so Raj takes it down. Yeah. Good bet. Raj, Raj correctly sniffed out that there's probably a lot of hands that Mike might fold, and also that Chandra was pretty weak there, so uh, worked out perfectly for him. Nice move there by Raj. Playing for the win. Look at that room. Yeah. Well, uh, the back tournament area. Looks yeah. like the uh, area in which the turbo is going right now. Looks like those are our turbo tables. Turbo table. Turbo table. And they're at the final five. Bowl. Table. The uh, giant stack. Some of those tables have to be the giant stack. The turbo. 
King Queen now for Mike. <laughs> and there's your next hat idea. Just grr on top. Dip it. <laughs> and rip it. Ace for Raj there. Oh, you know there's going to be a raise coming from Raj here. Interesting. I am Mike leading the action here. And Tony with a hard 12. And Mike gets a little bit back after that lap. Looks like they're pausing to go to the final table there in the giant go. stack. Each one of those players guaranteed a cool 1450 bucks for moving to that table. Again, just 2 million fewer chips in play in that giant stack than there are here at our final table. It's pretty impressive. It is. That I mean, you, you know sure it's going to be a, a big tournament when the uh, white 25K chips come out in level three. <laughs> <laughs> that stack is giant. What a giant. All right. We continue on. And 43. Feels like a lot. It does. You know, in tournament poker, it moves a lot slower. So, I mean, granted, by this time, we're doing a cash stream. We're probably looking around hand 70 at this Whoa. point. But Yeah. They don't really need to uh, talk ICM in the cash game. And uh, yeah. it's, since those decisions only affect that next pot, usually, uh, right. you make, they make them a little faster, I think. There are uh, definitely ICM implications that these guys have to think about. There's uh, pay jumps. There's meta. There's history. There's maybe being tired from playing for two days straight. Who knows? Lots yeah. of lots of things going on. Lots of factors. You can see the consolidation to that final table going on there. Again, here we are. About 1 o'clock in the morning. It is officially Monday. It's been Monday for about an hour now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got oh. four tournaments coming up. Oh, yeah. Since it's Monday. Four of them today. Man, this is a jam-packed schedule. That we is. talked about it already. No Limit Hold'em with Bomb Pots. We're playing it Houston style. <laughs> Every level change, we do a Bomb Pot. Small blind, Annie. Not big Small blind, blind, like Annie, you said yes. earlier. Like. You messed up. Definitely wasn't De me. Yeah, it was like definitely you. Me yeah, that like, said it, yes. like Wes mistakenly <laughs> said earlier. Uh, Omaha eight or better at two o'clock. No limit. Hold them with one optional add-on. Ten thousand dollar guarantee. Eighty dollar buy-in. That's at five o'clock. And then of course, Mega Satellite with three seats guaranteed into the title event. It's gonna be a busy Monday. Should go get that some sleep. Psych. Tax day. Yep. <laughs> oh, crap. Is that today? Uh, yeah, that's, that's today. Lego had to go and ruin the mood. <laughs> that's where you give some of your like income back to the government, right? Uh, yeah, uh, give. It's not I like should. they're demanding it. I should yeah. probably <laughs> go look into that. Yeah. I probably owe some. Top pair for Raj and... Backdoor wheel draw for Chandler. Wow, that was yeah. generous of you. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, that's true. Let's be real here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this tournament started today at 2.30. The day two restart was at 2.30 p.m. Uh, there was a turbo flight that started at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of these players... I do not believe any uh, of these players were involved in the turbo. No, the only one I don't remember when they bagged would be Tony, but I remember. I think uh, uh, Tony bagged uh, two nights ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mike bagged last night. Chandra bagged the first night, I think. And Raj. Not sure either, but yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, none of these players played the turbo. But so, in theory, you could get here at 9 a.m. and still be playing at 1 a.m., yeah. just the nature of that beast. That's how it works. Did we have any uh, double bag bonuses 
There was one, yeah. There was one. Uh, Cedric. The poker traveler? The poker traveler, oh, yeah. My. He bagged. He came out and played two flights and bagged them both and then tried a third and fourth, and I think, and then <laughs> not so much, but he had a bounty to start the day. He posted his results, I saw, on the socials. It looked like he made a slight profit. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, he busted fairly early in the day. Tony going to open to 350K with King Jack suited. It's definitely the prettiest suit, too, to look down on, suited in spades. Spades are so, I mean, a suited king. We all know. <laughs> We all know what to do with that bad boy. <laughs> but yeah, once it's in spades, I mean, it's just so pretty. Gotta kiss myself. So pretty. So four players now remaining in that second chance turbo. And I can't imagine that one going too much longer without any kind of talks of ICM. Or just being over. Or right? yeah, just, I mean, the way it's moving, yeah. Turby turbo. I mean, for a turbo, it still has decent stack. Yeah. It's 16, 17 big blind average still. Yes. Yeah. For a turbo, that's really not bad. Chunder, a suited queen on the button. That's. That's a knocking on the door of Griffin, Bill, but not, <laughs> not so much. It's, it's at least worth. Look, yeah, oh yeah, with emphasis, he puts chips in. Mm -hmm. I will raise it. Oh, Raj, by the mighty Raj. Ducks. <laughs> He's got two cards that look the same. I got a feeling he's coming along. Oh, definitely so. Oh. Just gonna flat here. I'm glad he grabbed chips before he could finish the sentence because I thought he was yeah. going to raise and he came in with the call. So that's I could just pretend like that's what I was going to say. So deuces are good on the flop. Of course, a board of this texture is one Chunder can easily represent from the button. And he's going to go ahead and bet at it. 475. Yeah, that's pretty big. That's oh. a good size bet. I think Raj has figured out that Chunder continues on a lot of flop and then slows down on a lot of turns. So he's probably thinking if his deuces are good, then he'll have a shot of getting to a river uh, and then finding out for sure. I think if, if Chandra can find another bullet here, I think it would work. If he slows down like he has in the past, I think... Uh, Raj has the chance of getting to the river and showing down deuces on I don't know, all boards without a deuce are scary for deuces for me, but <laughs> uh, get to show down deuces with potentially five over cards. I mean, Chunder uh, does pick yeah. up some gutter ball straight outs. Yeah, maybe that'll give him the courage to fire again. No, it does no, go check, does check, check. And a five, so let's see. Raj checks. Let's see if Chunder can find. Can he find a bullet there? Hmm. Just thinking about is there any chance I win if I check? Probably not. Is there any chance I win if I bet? Maybe? You gotta also keep into account what is Raj calling with on the flop here with that continuation bet? Yeah. I would guess that Chunder does not put him on deuces. No, definitely not. Does end up checking it, and the deuces will take it down. Okay, I think I can give you your prediction privileges back. All right, thanks. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I may get uh, chastised by the chat, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Man, there's, there's a look at the numbers. 75, 150. Wow. I don't oh, You could barely even call that a level change. It's almost the same. It's always try to give as much play as possible, and all the money is on the line. That's, 
As you can see there, it's going to cost our heroes about 375k in orbit. Actually, exactly 375k in orbit to keep going now. Raj going to open his button. Ace-6 offsuit. Tony behind him. Queen-10 of diamonds. From the small blind. He'll stick around. Suited Broadway cards. Very pretty looking. So heads up to the flop we go. Two diamonds, but a paired board. And that paired board just happens to give Raj trips. What's up, What's up? To the turn, there's the king of hearts. So not able to complete the flush draw on the turn. He's gonna have to hope for a favorable river. You see Tony drawing the five outs. Check, check. To the river we go. It's a seven. So trip sixes are way good, but now that's going to draw Tony out of hiding to bet at it. There's the raise up to a million and quickly folding the option is Tony. So Raj coming through with trip sixes. Phony, good to see you in the chat, my friend. Very good morning to you. Again, it is Monday morning now, a show that started on Sunday night. Again, this is the final table of the quarter million dollar guaranteed mystery bounty. We have whittled it down to our final four combatants. And Tony, a hand you can double down with, not too much more. Mike is connected, seems to be enough for him, and Chander with the option. So heads up we go, five in the window, look at here. Immediately checks through, and now Chunder comes away with top pair. But top pair, of course, giving Mike the straight as we go to the river. King of Hearts. Uh, very good morning to you, Lego. I understand. It's been a long day for you. Now Mike gonna bet for some value here. A little thin value, 275 the bet. And he will get paid off on it, so the straight is good. Takes a little bite out of Chunder. But again, the stack depths, everybody's still got a good fighting chance at taking home top prize tonight. 
You can see there, it looks like the Giant Stack Turbo Second Chance Tournament has reached its conclusion. And looks like they ended up making a deal. I was going to say, that's an awfully quick turnaround to lose four people. So you can only imagine it wound up in a deal. But again, top price, $3,130. Let's do this. <laughs> and now Tony with Jax under the gun. And the Rays coming in, 350K. Chunder looks down at AC Ducey. We'll find the full, but Raj has an ace of his own. Ace six offsuit. And Raj going to make the call, so we will go to a flop. A6 against Jax. And it's a jack high flop. Top set for Tony. I've been waiting for you. Let's do this shit, dog. Backdoor hearts. And then over to the board for Raj. And the bet sizing from Tony it looks about 300K. If Raj is content to flat here, he is. He will make the call, and off we go to the turn. It looks like the computer thinks Tony's already won the hand. Well, of course, get that situation rectified in just a moment. We wait for everything to get corrected. Apologies to everybody watching around at home. Looks like it checked on through to the river, so not quite sure what we're working with, but and now we'll cut away from the table entirely. And the tournament area been whittled down to one table, it seems. CPU has no hope. Yep. Yeah, I think this one may be lost. Yes. Well, we see Raj here contemplating his move on the river. Not sure if he's facing a bet. He will fold, so I imagine he was. Yeah, uh, you can join the club, AC. It's a very non-exclusive club called everybody watching the show right now. <laughs> well, here's 
Open that we get our technical issue fixed. Apologies again to everybody following along at home. We know this. The hand was folded by Raj. Tony won the pot. We're not sure what the action was on the river. It did go check, check on the turn. I could get that much from what we were shown. And this level winding down. Blinds will be going up next hand. Hammer must be running the tech. There we go. I wondered who was going to break the ice with a hammer joke. But Chunder now, the computer hand. Saying no. And how about that? That's our first walk of the final table. And you know it's been a good final table when you get the first walk of the evening. Two hours and 46 minutes into the final table. And blinds are going up. <laughs> 75, 150, 150. And over to Tony in the small blind, Jack 8. See if he elects to try and see a flop. He does. He's going to make the call, but Mike suited and connected. He's going to let it happen. Flop comes, all spades. And Jack High, the best hand at the moment. No player holding on to a spade for a draw. Board will pair deuces. And the king of spades means that, uh, you know, it's going to be won by Jack High. Tony looks like he wants to bet it. Does check, goes check, check. You know, Mike's not putting anything into this pot. There it is. Check, check, Jack High. Good. You see here, we're getting to the dreaded 100-200 level. That will rear its ugly head in the not-too-distant future. Here we take a look at our V pips. Chunder has taken over the top spot in the V pip category. Mike still at the rear of the pack. And now a suited ace eight for Tony. And on the button, let's see some magic. Does come the raise from Tony. To make it a half million to go. Mike right behind him with a pocket pair. Mike gonna fold his option with those sixes, however. 
now Chunder got to just flip him up and fold. Tony had him absolutely dominated. He'll show him just how far behind he was. And a look there again at the final table for the giant stack. And first prize taking home $15,670. Those guys are at the same level that we were when we started our final table. 30K, 60K, 60K. There's a total of 262 entries, creating a $65,500 prize pool. Definitely an awesome tournament. Rumors are already circulating that uh, TCH is planning to make it a more regularly occurring tournament here in Houston. And now Chunder sees a suited king. He's going to move all in, put some pressure on Raj, and Raj going to have to fold his natural nine. And looky here, big slick. It's one for Mike under the gun. And he's going to open with it. Looks like it's going to be about 400K to go. And Tony, four tray line away. No good. And this is a part of the tournament where you just wait for two players to wake up with hands that warrant seeing a flop, if not getting it all in free. And now Tony, ace, nine, the small blind. Again, most hands we're going to see forehanded are definitely going to be the blind on blind hands. Tony, with his ace, nine, is going to bump things up. He'll make it 575 to go. 10, eight. Definitely not seeing a flop that time. Yeah, it's usually when you start seeing hand after hand after hand like this, when we start hearing the ICM talks again. And we heard Hammer talk about the presence of the smaller stacks when it comes to ICMing. Well, of course, over the last hour, these guys have really evened out for the most part. I mean, you got uh, the one runaway and then everybody else kind of bringing up the rear. Raj was sitting on 5.7 million. He's got about 33 or pardon, 35 percent of the chips in play with four players remaining. That, that's what you want. Yeah, and Raj gonna move all in with ace high under the gun. <laughs> Not really. I bet if you throw me down five thousand on top of me, you can have it. No, no. no. <laughs> Twenty hours chance to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you almost got a call. 
And almost announced, and Chunder gonna fold Jack Nine suited. Um, yes, Art, TCH does spread 1 3, no limit hold'em. We spread 1 3, no limit. They also have a reverse button involved with the 1 3 game, so they get one hand of PLO per orbit. Anytime, Art. Anytime. <laughs> Chunder just going to flat here with 10-9. Raj will check his option. And off we go to the flop. And Raj connects with a pair of fours. Goes check, check. We go, no, it does not go check, check. Goes check, bet, and full. I say, that makes a little more sense than it going check, check. Check in now the VPEP skin. 42% is Raj, the chip leader. Chunder still clawing his way into middle position. Mike at 30%. And Tony at 36. I say, Tony feels like his v fip should be a little bit higher but thinking back more and more he has tightened up a bit since the beginning of the table and came in with a pretty interestingly up and down performance but now cementing himself in the middle of the pack And Jack nine for Raj. Does he want to gamble? Yeah, he is the big stack sitting on 6.2 million. Well, I'm sure he'd be thrilled to find out he's flipping with this holding. And definitely not a spot he wants to be in, losing this hand. But bring him back down, especially since we heard him talking about ICM not 20 seconds ago. Maybe a little longer than 20 seconds. He will find the fold. Again, Chunder finding a pocket pair, jamming all in. And Tony now with ace high. And a big smile. Big smile. Been a little bit since we've seen that smile from Tony. Again, just an all-around fun person to be at a table with. He's having a blast at this final table. That is for sure. Ah, he just mentioned it, too. <laughs> See? Start moving. There you go. Usually, when they start heading towards the muck like that, even if it's back and forth, that's. What is AC saying? I must be running the tech. That big smiley uh, face. He has his own version of smiley. I'll tell think... you what, we're going to give another shot at that one. Yeah. Uh, take two. Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> It must be early in the morning. <laughs> Hammer must be running the tech. Yeah. There was a little hand while you had to step away for a minute where it didn't catch the action on Turner River. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you're saying there. Yeah, no. Nobody lets me touch anything technical. I can tell you that much. I mean, when, 
we heard Atlas Stewart was coming back to TCH Houston, we had to hammer proof all the locks. <laughs> I mean, they put the little plastic things <laughs> inside the outlets so that I can't touch them. I mean, the one in the liquor cabinet alone, that would cost us a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the last thing we want is you getting into the cleaning supplies. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just shouldn't be allowed to touch anything. If you wasn't happy? Chips. I'm pretty good with chips. There you go. That's about it. No, it wasn't happening. Trust me. You know, it wasn't happening. I had a good hand. I don't know what would have happened. As we know, like, when you had your chance, we don't know if it was a good late. I don't know what happened. I had a good hand. It wasn't happening. I, 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 I lay down on it. I got a trophy to win. <laughs> I even want it more now that I know Rod wants it. I got to take it. I, 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 and 6-4 in spades, a little suited gapper for Tony. Doesn't think it warrants a call, but how about the high suited connector from Mike? Queen Jack of Hearts. Gonna That's get the quick pretty. lay down. That's a pretty hand. That, not so much. Jack six. Yeah, plus. Jack six. So we take a look at the stacks. Raj still way out in front. Tony nipping on his heels. Mike and Chander are getting a little separation now between the middle of the pack and the short stack. Yeah, I really don't think Chander is going to even think about jamming fives of the middle stack. But. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with having a deuce in my hand, he no. says. I'm just giving you a walk out of the kindness of my heart. There you go. Out of the kindness of my heart. And quickly, Chender finds an ace. He's all in. Raj, ace, deuce, lays it down. Tony's going to lay the Brunson down in just a second. He'll feel him back to be disappointed. And we'll see if Mike wants to do battle with Chunder. Yeah, it would cut Mike's stack in half if he loses this. And looky here, he will make the call. So Mike and Chunder gonna do battle. Chunder's tournament life at risk. Queen Jack, a six. Off to a flop we go. Queen Jack, oh, flopping two pair, drawing to a mere five percent. He's got to go perfect, perfect. The turn, oh, he works oh, his no, way no, closer. He needs his six. Eight. Oh, oh no. it's a deuce. And with I'm that, Chunder will take He's home never. our fourth place prize as we go back to our ladder here. Chunder in fourth place will be taking home $9,160 for his efforts. Not a bad return for $600. I know he also got uh, Go get your quite a few 
Bounties. I don't know how much. I know the like first one he had three. On the first break, he had three bounties. He drew three of the $400 bounties. But uh, I think he ended up getting a few more than that. But great run. Uh, regular player here. Every series stop that we've done, he's definitely been a part of many of the tournaments. Good to see him get a nice score in this one. And I am sure we will see him next week for the title event. Oh, absolutely. Which happens to start on Wednesday Just so happens. at 12 o'clock. $1,100 buy-in, half million guaranteed. Right. That is one half of one half million of one dollars. That's guaranteed. So, like, even if, for instance, it came up short, like, uh, we would still pay $500,000 to the prize pool. And looks like they're interested in looking at ICM again. And there's the pinstripe suit. Makes its way back to the table. So again, like you said, waiting for one of the smaller stacks to skedaddle so the numbers would jump a little bit when it comes to the ICM game. Who said that? Oh, uh, you know, so I think the gentleman in the pinstripe suit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is, say what you will about me and my poker skills, but that is, a, that is quite the suit. I like, I like that suit. You know, and... Floor manager Chris Hall making an appearance as well. So do you think it goes through this time when we're talking ICM? I'm standing right there, so I don't want to influence any action. Oh, that is very true. Very, very true. I do think that uh, with the minimum payment bouncing up a couple decibels, I think it's much more likely uh, Chop gets through this time. Uh, only time will tell. Here's what I can tell you, just factual. Uh, Tony has 4.675 million. Since I don't see it on the screen right there. Mike has 4.45 million, and Raj has 5825. 5825000 So the second and the third biggest stacks still pretty close together. Slight separation between them and Raj up top. Double checking, make sure the numbers they gave me match the numbers they should be. Where's the cowboy hat? <laughs> I... It might be time to bring back the cowboy hat. I don't yeah, know. I think I don't know. Uh, the world has spoken, and I think it's time. You know? Yeah. 4,450,000. Okay, Tony, your number is 2, 1, 380. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> $21,050. $21,050. $22,920. I think you could hear what I said there, but Tony, $21,380. Uh, Mike, $21,050. And Raj is getting $22,920. So if this deal is made, Raj is going to be crowned our champion. He'll take home the Atlas Trophy. They do have the option of setting things aside and playing for it. There are obviously still three bounties left. Uh, uh, there was a couple of draws that I didn't see. The bounties are 2500 2500 and 1000 so. got six grand. I mean, that splits evenly three ways. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you could hear. I didn't know it at the time because... As you know, some of those, uh, they showed it to the wrong camera, so I wasn't sure which ones there were. Uh, I had an idea of which ones were left, but I didn't want to tell them wrong and influence the deal. Uh, Raj threw in the chip, signifying that he was fine with it pretty quickly, and the other two are, are the ones that are talking about it right now. Uh <laughs> Which I don't know if you asked that question before or after I just said that, but there were two twenty five hundreds and a thousand dollar bounty left. If you finish second, you're gonna get twenty thousand. So yeah, it's true. It's practically second place money for both the shorter stacks. Yeah. 
Like Tony's agreed to it. Mike's agreed to it. And yeah, the kind of handshake job. is usually a good sign. Yeah. They, they did, in fact, take the top of the chop. Raja ends up the most. They all get an extra 2,000 on top of those numbers that we just read. Go get that. Uh, we're that and let them know what's happening so that they can get out quickly as they want to. Welcome to hang out. Play some cash games, do whatever they want, but uh, obviously everyone's been playing for a long time. They're anxious to be done. I wanted to get that part done, so. Uh, yeah. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Got ourselves a chop. You and, got a deal. Uh, another event in the books, tournament down. So it was a lot of fun from 503 down to 3. Yeah. And they chop it at the end. So a well-played tournament all round. Any uh, departing words of wisdom for TCH Live Nation? I very much appreciate everyone joining us, putting up with uh, our banter. I very much take the approach of kind of giving inside look to what we know that maybe isn't common knowledge or isn't out there and uh, obviously have some fun, playful moments throughout. Not necessarily the most analytical uh commentary and you know what i prefer it that way i think it's more fun there's plenty of analytical commentary out there if you're looking for it this one is uh mid-stakes people having a lot of fun and tournaments in texas are just built different they are built around fun these are social clubs they're not casinos and uh, i very much enjoy being a part of that and we have more live streams and tournaments coming up i know we talked about it a lot but please check out the schedule on poker atlas check out updates at tch tournaments Dot com and uh, chip counts are going to be available on the Poker Atlas app throughout the entire series and throughout most venues that use Poker Atlas. Anyone who chooses to use that feature, it's available and uh, is a great tool for places to use. So please check it out. And uh, we will be here throughout the week with more streams, more commentary, more fun, big events. Still plenty of guarantees left in the books, and I don't know if any of that was any wisdom like you asked for, but they were, in fact, words, so I met at least half of your criteria. Uh, half the criteria met. You know what? We'll take it. And that will do it for us. Again, as we get set up for the winner's photo being taken there in front of the Atlas Tour backdrop, it's time for us to say goodnight. Again, a big congratulations to Raj, Mike, and, you know, we'll throw Tony in there, too. Yeah, absolutely, there. yeah. Night. Congrats to all of them. Congratulations. A good fight and good payouts to boot. So on behalf of Texas Card House, TCH Live, and, of course, the great Poker Atlas, I'm Wes Tucker, and we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.